Stadium has been the site of many memorable football games, and today it's the site of a Big Ten, Pac-10 clash between the Buckeyes of Ohio State and the Trojans of Southern California. It's the first game of a Big Ten, Pac-10 doubleheader, and here come the Buckeyes of Ohio State. They're 1-0, ranked 25th in the country. Last time they met the Trojans in the Coliseum was 1963, and John Cooper in his second year as head coach of the Buckeyes. Two previous trips here as head coach at Arizona State. He beat USC. And now the Trojans of USC before this crowd expected to be 80,000. Larry Smith, co-Pac-10 coach of the year, but he's 0-6 against Midwest teams in his two years at USC. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender. Usually when these two teams meet, it's in Pasadena on New Year's Day and national title implications. But this team from Ohio State really struggled last year. They had their poorest record in 22 years. They went 4-6-1. And, and I'll tell you, Buckeye fans take to defeat, and they didn't like it at all. Working with me is my partner, Dick Vermeil. And Dick, John Cooper really got a rude awakening, his first year as coach at Ohio State. That's true, Gary. But last year, Gary and I had the opportunity to broadcast three of their games, and they played awfully well, winning two and losing one. Wednesday, I spent the entire day in Columbus, Ohio. I watched them practice. I watched film. I talked with the coaches. I talked with the players. This is a better football team. They're bigger, faster, quicker, and maybe even more important, Coach Cooper says it's the best attitude team he's ever had. Dick, you talk about rude awakenings. What about USC? They were ranked number one in a lot of polls, and they stumbled coming out of the gate against Illinois here in the Coliseum. Two of the eight times USC has won the national championship, they've lost the first game of the season. Don't allow that to mislead you. This is a fine football team, maybe one of the top three or four teams in the country. And defensively, they may be the best team in the country. And when young Todd Brinovich, their freshman quarterback, gains experience, watch out. And so the Trojans and Buckeyes, the first of two, a twin bill from L.A. We're going to be back now with the opening kickoff of game number one, a big day of football here on ABC. ABC's College Football. The Ohio State Buckeyes versus the USC Trojans. Brought to you by Geo. Get to know Geo. Sold and serviced by Chevrolet Geo dealers. By UPS. Fast, efficient service to 175 countries and territories worldwide. By the Upjohn Company. If you're concerned about hair loss, see your doctor. And by the insurance companies of the Kemper Group and the independent agents who represent them. Back at the Coliseum. It's hot here today. As let's go now to the sideline, meet another member of our broadcast team, Cheryl Miller. Thanks a lot, Gary. It is hard to believe that today is the second day of the fall season. It is going to be a hot one. The temperature is predicted to be around 90 degrees, but right now it is 95 on the field. So you can bet the trainers from both sides will have their hands full trying to keep the players calm, cool, mostly cool, and collected. Back to you, Gary. Cheryl, thank you. USC won the toss. They deferred to the second half, so kicking off will be the Trojans from left to right as Grant Runnerstrom will be kicking off and going back deep, Bobby Olive, he is number eight, and he's joined by Scotty Graham. So the Buckeyes and Trojans, what a tradition. Going at it for the first time here in the Coliseum since 1963. Runnerstrom is into the football, and Scotty Graham is waiting in the goal line area, back of the end zone, he'll down it there for the touchback and the Buckeyes will bring it out to the 20-yard line. Let's set offensively now. John Cooper's crew. Greg Fry is the quarterback. He had a career day last Saturday against Oklahoma State. He started all 11 games. Here's his supporting cast. Carlos Snow, Scotty Graham, Bobby Olive had a career day against the Oklahoma State team and one of the wideouts. Ellis, the big tight end. They are big up front. Six, five and a half. They average 295 pounds. The asterisk or the stars indicating returning starters from last year. Fry will start from the 20. They go against the second right defense against the rush in USC. Bobby Olive comes in motion. It's Carlos Snow. He has a gain of seven out to the 27-yard line. 
Snow hit by Delmar Chesley, the leading tackler for USC. And let's take a look now at the Trojans defensively. Talked about how good they were a year ago. They picked up where they left off. Ryan, an All-American. Frugier, replacing the injured Gibson. There's William, Ross, Chesley, and Seau. Three of those returning starters. And three of the four guys in the secondary returned from last year in a starting role. Second down now. Three yards to go. Two receivers to the near side of the field. Short man is Graham, the fullback. He's got the first down all the way to the 50-yard line. Dwayne Garner caught up, and the Buckeyes, after a 14-yard run by Scotty Graham, have it at the midfield strike. You know, in talking to Jim Coletto, the offensive coordinator, he was concerned about this backfield unit you see moving the ball right now because Carlos Snow was not able to practice 25, the running back, all week, Gary. He had fluid on the knee, and they, they couldn't get him into practice field. Today is the first day he's had pads on all week. He had 20 cc's of fluid removed from that knee. He had arthroscopic surgery in July. Olive and Graham, the wideouts. First down for Ohio State. Fry giving off to Snow, hit behind the line of scrimmage, stays on his feet to the 45-yard line. And that's Chesley again on the stop for the Trojans of USC. The strength of this Ohio State offensive football team is their offensive line. John Cooper said, if they are the strength of our football team, they're going to have to prove it today. They're moving the ball on the ground right now, but Big Joe Stasniak, Jeff Davidson, Dan Beatty, Carl Coles, Tim Moxley, averaging about 290 pounds. They're big horses. Carlos Snow, last year had a brilliant game, the final game of the season against Michigan, 170 yards rushing. Second down coming up. Second and six. Snow, first down, 35, on his feet at the 40. He's all the way to the 20-yard line, and Ohio State is running the ball effectively. Scott Ross, the all pac 10 performer, the junior out of El Toro, California, over to make the stop. A 25-yard run. To run the ball, a tight end has to get a good block when you're running outside. And you'll see in the middle of your screen, Jeff Ellis, 89, did a nice job of turning the defender out. He broke up underneath. Good game. They're really moving the ball. Are they ever starting from their own 20? Now at the 21 of USC. Initial series of the game. Fry now with receivers wide left and wide right. Graham, and he's met instantly. Goes nowhere on that play. That was Tim Ryan, the All-American, along with Michael Williams out of Dallas, Texas, one of the outside linebackers, and also Chesley. So no gain on the play. It'll bring up second down. Unusually warm today, as Cheryl Miller was telling you, and that was of some concern to Ohio State. They wanted to play a lot of people in this game. They did, but Wednesday on the practice field, it was hot and humid in Columbus. So they're prepared for the heat. Second down, 10, just short of the 20-yard line. Fry, handoff to Snow. Snow getting about a yard to the 19-yard line. It was Michael Tex Williams who dragged him down on the far side. It'll be third down and nine yards to go. You know, we've had a lot of innovations in college football, but this is a first. A quarterback wearing a face mask or shield, if you will. That's not for protection of the eyes, Gary. They're wearing that so the secondary can't re read the quarterback's eyes as he drops back and pass, believe it or not. I've never heard of that, but hey, it's a gimmick. It might work. Well, they call him, what, Darth Vader when they wear those? <laughs> Usually it's a linebacker that wears them, but here's a quarterback. He doesn't want the safety to see the direction he's looking. Now, Mark Carrier told me he doesn't care because he reads the quarterback's eyes anyway. That's USC's free safety thought. Thus far, they have not thrown the football, but they've come to third and nine. Six rushing plays on this drive, and they're going to throw it for the first time. Fry's in trouble. Gets rid of it, and it's broken up. Very good pressure coming that time. That was Junior Seau, who absolutely is in every quarterback's face. He is something special from Oceanside, California that was able to burst through on the play. You'll see he appears to have uh, time to throw after he scrambles here. <laughs> Junior Seau, number 55, coming after. Now, Junior Seau, as you're watching practice, Gary, may very well be the best athlete in that front seven. This will be a 37-yard field goal by Pat O'Maro, and O'Maro has hit his last seven field goals going to back to last season. 
Thus far, one of one. He had one from 45 last week. The kick by Pat O'Mara is on the way, and the Buckeyes have missed it. It is wide to the left. So after that impressive drive, they come away empty-handed. And USC will get the football for the first time. 11.08 to go in this first quarter. No score from the Coliseum. Getting to know. One dry refreshes completely. One taste, and you'll know why. Has won five times. Archie Griffin being the only player ever to win the Heisman two times. One of those Heisman Trophy winners is on the sideline with Cheryl Miller. Cheryl? Thank you, Gary, and he certainly doesn't need any introduction. And Archie, you must be very pleased outside of missing the field goal. They were able to move the ball very well. I was very happy with the way that we moved the ball, especially on the ground. I think that's a good sign for us, and hopefully we can continue to do it like that. Now, you are also the assistant athletic director, and you have a very special event coming up. Tell me a little bit about the centennial celebration. Well, I'll tell you what, this is 100 years of football for Ohio State, and uh, we're doing all kinds of things to celebrate that. Uh, we've got uh, a lot of reunions planned. Uh, we've got special things going on at the university, and you know, we're just looking forward for a great year, getting a lot of people back. All right, thank you very much. And enjoy the game, Archie. Archie Griffin, only two-time winner of the Heisman Trophy. From the 22, Greg Price starts this series, and the near side, the catch is made. Bobby Olive coming up with a grab. They want to mix it up, Dick Vermeil on first down, and here they come out throwing on first down. Well, the quarterback coach, Ron Hudson, said that they want to run half the time on first down, pass half the time. They didn't feel they could pound it on these guys. Now, here's Bobby Olive, the receiver. Note how he pushes right at the end of his route. See him give that little push? That gave him the cushion to come back in the room to catch the ball. He was brilliant last week. Five catches, 108 yards, a 57-yard touchdown grab against Oklahoma State. First down now at the 34 for the Buckeyes. Snow and Snow is able to get to the 40-yard line. Pick up a five, and now for an update, let's go to New York. Here's Roger Twible. Thank you very much, uh, Gary. Penn State has beaten Boston College. The final now, 7-3, Tony Saka. That fourth down, one-yard run with 44 seconds left to go gives the Nittany Lions the win. And Alabama, 15th ranked, has beaten Kentucky 15-3. Let's go back to the Coliseum and Gary Bender. Roger, thank you. From the 39-yard line now, you see the time remaining. No score in this first quarter. Second down and four for the Buckeyes. Play action fake by Fry in a lot of trouble, scrambling out. Gets out to the 44-yard line, and Chesley's there again to make the stop. Greg Fry, one thing about him, he has matured greatly from a year ago. He's really shown some poise. Starting 11 games will do that for you. It will, and you know, he's, he threw 76% complete in the first game, 16 of 21. That's outstanding, yet the coaches aren't convinced he's even close to reaching his potential yet. He's got a lot of, lot of room to grow. Coming off of a big game last week, 285 yards passing. He's one of two today now for 11 yards as they bring the sticks out. They had it second and four. Let's see if they got it. They did. First down, Ohio State. See, what you have to do a good job on your early downs against USC. If you allow them to get you in third and long situations and they can put their hands down and raise up their rear ends and come after you, they put too much pressure on you to throw the ball efficiently. Isn't that interesting? Look at that graphic. Ohio State off and moving on the ground thus far. Surprising, but that's what John Cooper said. Our offensive line has to play well today. And they, he says that's their strength. They've got to prove it. From the 44, first down. He threads the needle that time. Very fine throw to Jeff Ellis, the tight end. He caught that ball between two defenders. He's to the 47, about a yard short of the first down. Again, the value of play action passing on a running down. He'll fake to the tailback, allow the tight end to get across the formation. You'll see him appear here. Here he goes. Nice job, and he threaded the needle, like you said, Gary. Jeff Ellis now has caught a ball in 16 straight games. Comes from quite a background. His daddy, Jimmy Ellis, the former heavyweight champion of the world. Second and a long one. This is the kind of down and distance situation you like, second and one. Option. Try pitching to Snow. Snow trying to get the corner. He's got it, and he's got the first down. Mark Carrier, the All-American safety over there to make the stop for USC. 
So Carlos Snow, despite that knee, showing very good outside speed. The key to that was the pull of the offensive tackle. Watch him as he goes. They read fake inside. Now watch him pull. That's 300-pound tackle out there. He flips it out there. Good block at the point of attack on Michael Williams. That's it, Snow. He just dips inside. Out he goes. Good runner. They think that knee will get better as the year wears on. They've had to continually drain the fluid off, but he looked good there. First down at the 42 of USC. It's Snow again. Snow inside the 40 to the 36-yard line, and Dan Owens, who's vastly underrated at that other defensive tackle spot, made the tackle. Gary, what is happening with... Ohio State's running game right now is the quarterback is calling the plays on the line of scrimmage according to the alignment of the nose guard, believe it or not. And they have, SC has strong tendencies and they're going with these tendencies and right now it's really helping them. You'll see SC make an adjustment here pretty quick. They move around Dan Owens. They'll move him to the nose guard occasionally and then to the defensive tackle spot. Second down and three. Scotty Graham trying to get the first down, and he does to the 32-yard line. We talked about Junior Seo, how tough he is, but really, Dick, he's playing with one hand. <laughs> he's tough, but he's so tough, Gary. He got in a fight in the practice field the other day, got his hand caught in the face mask, and compound fractured a finger. His <laughs> middle finger. His middle finger. And it's really causing him a great deal of difficulty. They think they will get the cast off in two weeks. And it's tough to pass rush with only one hand. You can't grab with that other one and throw people around. And he is a fine pass rusher. So they had to confirm what we thought was right. A first down to the 32-yard line. So again, the two times Ohio State's had the ball, they've moved it well. They've mixed it up well. You saw the graphic a while ago. Nobody's been able to run against USC until today. Chris Allen, the defensive coordinator at USC, told us the number one thing he wanted to do was to attack them. They weren't going to sit and try to catch those big offensive linemen. They were going to stunt and attack, and it looks like they've got to be a little more aggressive right now. First down for the 32. No score thus far. Sprint draw handoff to Snow, and Snow got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Scott Ross is there. Snow is quite a, uh, quite a character, that number 35. Really enjoyed my visit with Larry Smith. First time I brought, had the opportunity to broadcast an SC game. And, you know, for a former UCLA coach and Stanford assistant, <laughs> it's, it's an uncomfortable feeling coming on this campus. Well, when Traveler started running around, I noticed you didn't exactly enjoy that side again. <laughs> no, it makes you nervous. That <laughs> You're in enemy territory. Oh, you bet. But, boy, were they very nice people to be with. Second down and 10 now for the Buckeyes. Play action fake by Fries on target. That's Carlos Snow coming out of the backfield. He's hit by Scott Ross. We have a man down for Ohio State at the 34-yard line. And that is Jeff Ellis, their tight end, the junior out of Louisville, Kentucky. Their backup tight end is Rich Hoffman. As he comes in the ballgame, his number will be 87. They're working on his left knee. He has no knee injury history. Cooper says a year from now, he'll be one of the top tight ends in football, Gary. Let's talk about what great hands he has. He's up about 25 pounds. They list him at 250 pounds. So Ellis is down right now, and let's hope that's not too serious. The ball at the 28-yard line, and while we have a break, let's go back to New York and Roger Twible. Thank you very much, Gary. Highly touted. D. Dallas of Air Force, touted as a Heisman Trophy candidate this game against UTEP, and Dallas will go 35 yards, his second touchdown of the day, eight carries, 82 yards in the first half. He's now got an Air Force record, 34 touchdowns, and at halftime, 33-7, to the Air Force Academy leads UTEP. Also, at halftime right now, Miami has scored again. Erickson on a touchdown run. They lead Missouri 24-7. to Let's go back to the Coliseum and Gary Bender. Back here, no score. Gary Bender, Dick Vermeil, and Cheryl Miller from the Coliseum. And right now, the holdup is uh, the injury situation on Jeff Ellis, who is getting up. And a big part of their attack right now does not look good for the rest of this day. Well, sometimes you just sting that leg, you know, and it's possible that you can come back. And if you didn't stretch it too bad, a good sign will be if he can walk off the field by himself. 
and saw this crowd of 80,000 is very appreciative as Ellis comes to the near side no score the first drive Ohio State rushed for 61 yards and then they missed a 37 yard field goal the second time they've had the football they're moving again now at the USC 28 yard line that's the Ohio State trainers Billy Hill and Mike Bordner they really do a good job they're like a, a second mom to those football players third down now six yards to go Jeff Graham goes split out and Bernard Edwards is checked in as another wide out Jim Palmer is the new tight end replacing Jeff Ellis that is Palmer in motion try back to throw he had to get rid of it before he wanted to Tried to hit Palmer who had gone in motion but Junior Seau was there again and Seau messed that play up and it's going to bring up a fourth down Junior Seau has such quickness Gary he can get off on the ball he has great fluid you'll see him coming off the outside of your screen here on the right hand side see him in a sprinter stance here he goes now Joe Stasiak number 74 lets him get two up far up field he turns gets around him the only thing he could do is grab a good pass rush pass protection technique not good enough for a guy that that caliber 40 yard field goal attempt tomorrow missed one from 37 yards earlier this is his first time since his freshman year to kick it all off of natural grass. The ball is down. The kick is up by Omaro, and this kick is good. And Ohio State is on the scoreboard. Pat Omaro has put the Buckeyes ahead, three to nothing. 4:18 left to go on this first quarter. We'll be back in a moment. Most men won't even discuss it with their wives, but when they start losing their hair, they talk about it with me. I say, don't wait. You're missing his first. That really had to help his confidence to come back and hit one three yards farther out. And as you said, in talking with him the other day on the practice field, he said the only time he kicks off grass is on the turf, and it really doesn't affect him. He says the ball goes a little lower, but goes just as far. But I, I tell you, he has a lot of confidence, but <laughs> like you said, that was a critical field goal for him. Some of his confidence coming from above. <laughs> Everybody needs a little help sometimes. Tomorrow ready now. Going back is going to be Ricky Urbans and Bruce Luisi for USC. Ohio State had a tough time covering kickoffs last week. Boy, this one is well hit. In the end zone is Larry Wallace, and he'll down it, so USC will bring it out to the 20-yard line. Pat Omaro, after that field goal, really got into that one. So at the 20 now, the Trojans still trying to get their offense going. Larry Smith, who on two occasions against John Cooper, has beaten him, and those were the days when Larry was at Arizona and John Cooper at Arizona State. As we move along in the ballgame, we, we have to watch offensively. USC is going to change up formations. They're going to break some of these tendencies that Ohio State is playing from a defensive standpoint. He wants to get some big chunks yardage Big wise. chunks. Hey, we all want to do that. Hand off, and this is Leroy Holt, the fullback, and Holt struggles out to the 25-yard line. Derek Eisenman was there first to make the stop. Leroy Holt, a delightful man out of Carson, California, their most inspirational player the last two years. He, is, he wants to be a history teacher when he gets out of college and a football coach after he plays in the National Football League. And he has that sparkle about him in his personality. I think he'd make a fine teacher. Second down now, five yards to go. Marinovich on to Urban. And Ricky Urbans gets three more. They're going to be a couple of yards short of the first down. Judah Herman over there to make the stop for Ohio State. Well, to get kind of an inside look at this, we asked Larry Smith how USC was going to approach today's game. Well, we're approaching it as a challenge because we've been here now, this is our third season, and we're 0-6 against the Midwest and the Big Ten. And uh, so we're, we're looking upon this as a team and a program as a big challenge. Right now, his team is challenged, trailing three to nothing. They have a third down and three. Marinovich, the redshirt freshman, on the option, penalty flags, they stop it. Looks like Galbraith, the tight end, moved before the snap of the ball. Pat Flood, the referee. So they'll 
will do third down over back from the 22 yard line. Here's Galbraith right here. Let's see if he moves early. Oh, there he goes. You know, <laughs> that isn't the first mistake he's made in his career as a football player. One time, Gary, he ran the wrong way with a kickoff in high school, scored a safety for the other team. <laughs> he and Roy Riggles have something in common. Huh? <laughs> Third down now, eight after the penalty. Play action fake by Marinovich. Intercepted. Picked up. That is Zach Dumas, who we mentioned didn't start because he didn't show up for practice Monday, and he comes up with it. There's a penalty flag down. Penalty flag back at the 20-yard line. The discussion going on at the 30-yard line. Personal foul. That's not a very intelligent play. Well, get mad, John. <laughs> He's going to chew on him. That's a dumb play by a football player. You get the turnover, then create a personal wow. foul after it. That not good football. Very costly, obviously. It, taking a look at the end zone here, you can see. Now, watch him look to the left. He came off play action passing, and one of the disadvantages of play action passing is many times you can't see downfield as well with this specific action, and chances are that was the case. So the interception obviously does not stand, and USC now has the ball at the Ohio State end of the field. The step off to the 48-yard line. So USC, who had had a third down through the interception, gets a new life. Now the personal foul going against USC. He pointed the other way to Ohio State, I thought. Yeah, but it's still Ohio State. Yeah, it is. Ball, okay, they've got it. You're right. You've got it. You've got it. Dead ball foul to the 48-yard line. It was after the interception, Gary. So at the 48, the Buckeyes will get it there. So Marinovich suffering his second interception of this year. Fry with time. And he'll get to the 49. All that running picked up one yard. Cleveland Colder was over there, along with Scott Ross, to make the stop. Second down, nine now for the Buckeyes. Let's go to Cheryl Miller. Thanks, Gary. Jeff Ellis is out for the remainder of the first half. He sprained the lateral part of his knee. He's about to be taken off on a card, but they're not sure exactly how serious the injury is. We'll have to get more of an update right after, right after the first half. All right, second down and nine now. The interception by Brown and the personal foul, setting the ball up at the Ohio State in, and here comes Carlos Snow. Snow close to the 35-yard line. Very good open field effort. Mark Carrier over to make the stop for USC. Really nice counter play. It froze the inside linebackers with that counter move, then and they broke it back. That's the play that Snow told me on the practice field the other day that he likes to run more than any other play. He likes that play. So the Buckeyes continue to move the ball, Dick. They've done a very good job of controlling that line of scrimmage. Snow already 71 yards for the day. That was a 16-yard run. Yeah. From the 35, Fry straight back. Tended receiver was Bobby Olive. Check that great Beatty at the five-yard line. Good coverage that time by the USC secondary, who has three starters coming back. Only Chris Hale missing from a year ago. That time with Ohio State did, Gary, to give the quarterback a little more passing time. They kept the fullback in, and he helped block doubled up on Junior Seau, who's been doing a good job of pass rushing. Therefore, he had the time he needed to throw. But give credit to Ernie Spears, number three, for doing a good job of covering. Coming in to punt the ball be Jeff Bowman on a fourth down and seven. You know, uh, Cooper is one of these guys that likes to play games in the kicking game. Never be surprised if he does something different. Well, they did that against Larry Smith when they tangled in the state of Arizona. 
if you'll notice USC's defense is not in a true punt return defense. Dead ball foul, delay of game on the offense, repeat fourth down. What they'll probably do is, is a delay a game on purpose to get the ball a little further and easier to drop it inside that 10-yard line. But you'll notice they know Cooper's reputation, plus it's at that, that point of the field. They're in a regular defense, not a punt return team defense. Ron Luce, who is Jim Luce's brother. Jim Luce, of course, an offensive lineman for the Redskins, will snap the ball, and Bowman will go back inside the 50 now to punt it. He punted twice last week at a 47.5 average. He'll try to drop that inside the 10. Cleveland Colder is back. He's going to let it hit, and he kicked it too far into the end zone. Isn't that something invariable? When the punter gets his best punt is when he's kicking it into the end zone. So from the 20-yard line now, the Trojans will have the football. Larry Smith and USC trailing in this football game, 3 to nothing. If ground clearance is important in your next pickup, watch this visual test. Two full-size half-ton 4x4s, Chevy and Ford, try to drive over this protected camera cage. First, the Chevy. Plenty of clearance, but the Ford. Cameras don't lie. When it comes to half-ton ground clearance, nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. The heartbeat of America. Today, from Chevrolet. For every man who wears Brute, there's a woman who loves what he smells like. Because there's something about Brute that's nice to be close to. Honey, I was just thinking about you. Brute, it smells like a man. I'd rather switch than itch. So I switched to Tegrin. Tegrin medicated shampoo controls all the major causes of itching and flaking. So Tegrin is more than strong enough for tough dandruff like yours. Wouldn't you rather switch than itch? Bo Schembechler leads Rose Bowl champion Michigan back to Pasadena to meet Pac-10 power UCLA. It's a college football special tonight on ABC Sports. This is Roger Twyville in New York. Rutgers playing their 1,000th college football game. Earlier, Scott Ernie had hooked up with Randy Jackson on a 90-yard touchdown catch. This time, they go 83 yards on the TD. Jackson, five catches, averaging 62-plus yards a catch so far this year. Over 925 yards total offense. Rutgers beats Northwestern 38-27. And at halftime, top-ranked Notre Dame leads Michigan State 14-6. Let's go back to Gary Bender. Tell you, Notre Dame run in a pretty good defensive team at Michigan State. George Perlis with that old Pittsburgh Steeler defense. They oh, are tough. I know it. Last year when we did their games, the only real problem they had in defense in the run was the option game. Especially when the quarterback kept it, remember? <laughs> and Tony Rice was carrying And he was a rocket. From the 20-yard line now, you see Dodger Stadium where the Padres and Dodgers are hooking up today. Padres losing a big one yesterday to the Dodgers in their chase to catch the Giants. Ricky Irvin. He's got a first down. That was Brian Cook, a redshirt freshman out of Youngstown, over to make the stop. But Irvin's had 180 yards last week against Utah State with a real burst on that play. He made a real good decision to break that to the outside. Probably from here it appeared to maybe be designed to go outside, but when you stretch the defense and can still get outside, you have to have good offensive line blocking. And Bill Schultz, number 76, the tackle, did a good job. Wallace Jackson split out three wideouts on this play for Marinovich. Gives her Irvins again and change of direction gets him two, maybe three yards on the play. Irvins is only five foot eight. He's hard to spot behind that offensive line. There's Pat Thomas getting up along with Jay Cook on the stop for Ohio State. You talk about this young man, Ricky Irvins, number 34, making good decisions running the football. The best decision he ever made in his life, he told me just recently was the decision to leave the street gangs of Pasadena and play Pop Warner football. It changed his whole life. From the 32-yard line now, second down and eight. Marinovich on the option. Pitching to Irvins. First down and some. Over there is the Ohio State secondary. Eventually run out of bounds. Vinnie Clark had a crack at him at the 45, and Jay Cook finally caught up with him. First down, USC. Now, Gary, the significance, ladies and gentlemen, the significance of this play is that that's the first time they have run an option to the strong side, and he is going to be the lead blocker right here. 
Number 39, Leroy Holt. This is the first time USC has done this, so there's no tendency. See, and it makes it a little tougher on the defense. Good game planning by the USC offensive coaching staff. What was that he said? We want to break those tendencies. We don't want Ohio State to see them all the time. He says we're finding out we just can't beat them physically up there. Ricky Irvins. Looks like he's going to have another big day. 25-yard gain that time. Just short of the 42 of Ohio State. 24 seconds left now in the first quarter. Three to nothing in favor of the Buckeyes. Rudovich, a little flare pass. Oh, oh. And he had some God. running room. Woo. He had a convoy. He had three Trojans running ahead of him, ready to throw blocks. Three Trojans, a truck trailer, I don't know, <laughs> and all the room. Look at Larry. I don't blame you, Larry. Oh. He's smiling, but that's a derisive smile. What he did was he started running with the football before he caught it. He saw all that room out there, and he said, oh, my gosh, I'm going to score. <laughs> but you must catch the ball. Marinovich now, after that drop pass, is one of five for ten yards and the one interception. And the 42, Marinovich. Pitches back to Urban. 35-yard line. Looks like he's just short of the first down. Benny Clark over there, the cornerback out of Cincinnati to make the stop for Ohio State. So we're going to come to the end now of this first quarter. 15 minutes has been played in the first of two. A twin bill here in L.A. Michigan and UCLA to follow later. After 15 minutes, Ohio State leads USC 3-0. This afternoon, but uh, I don't, I'm not sure that I've ever lost a ball game in a Coliseum. I coached two years at UCLA, and we were uh, one year won, won, won the championship, went to the Rose Bowl. Next year, we're nine and one. And of course, we were on a great Arizona State team over two years ago. And we, we lost two, so it hasn't been. On a third down and two, Marinovich throwing to the far side to Urbans, and very good coverage at time by Jim Peel, the junior out of Beaver Falls. Good reaction. They're marking the ball, looking the far side to see if he got the first down. They're going to bring the sticks in. USC's offensive coaches in visiting with them said, this is in talking to John Masco, that on those third and two situations, they wanted to get outside the defense. On the third and one situations, they wanted to go attack them straight ahead and get up inside. You know what's interesting? Uh, Larry Smith saying that he's lost six times in Midwestern teams. He feels they've out hitting. And early in this game, I think Ohio State was out hitting them. Well, you know, it's this Ohio State offensive line is a big, big football team. And SC's defense is big, but not great big. And they rely on their quickness and movement. And uh, right now, Ohio State's offensive line is tying up USC's. Now what USC has to do is turn it around and do the same thing to the Ohio State defensive front. Because Ohio State's offensive line, I think, is more physical than the... Ohio State offensive line. USC's got to get after him now. As you could see in the background there, they did not get the first down. It's fourth down and a yard, and USC is going to go for it. Line of scrimmage, the 32 and a half yard line. There's the first quarter stats. You can see the Buckeyes getting the better of it. And I tell you, in talking to their coaches, they did not anticipate being able to do what they're doing. They must be excited. That time of possession is what they wonder over 10 minutes in that first quarter. Fourth down. Marinovic sneaking straight ahead. Went behind Brad Leggett, the big guard, also Brent Parkinson, and it is a first down for USC. So on fourth down, the Buckeyes get it, and they're just short of the 31. I should say the Trojans get it. Jackson and now Wellman go to the top of the field, split out. Gary Wellman, Holt, and Irvin's the running backs. Marinovich pitching back to Ricky Irvins. He's gobbled up at the 28-yard line. Marinovich is down. Yes, he is down. Jim Peel is over to make the stop. Marinovich back at the 41-yard line. He's on one knee trying to get back, and uh, looks like he's holding his shoulder. They already lost Pat O'Hara, the, the starting quarterback, prior to the opener. The one thing they say about Todd Marinovich, he may be inexperienced, but he is a tough, fierce competitor. Both Larry Smith told us that, and his quarterback coach, Ray Dorr, told us that. Now they have Shane Foley, who is a backup quarterback. 
Let's see if we can pick up what happened to Marinovich. What happens many times is when you pitch the football, you take a shot after the pitch. See, you're helpless. There he is. He did take a shot right up underneath the chin. That see? was Tom Lease that hit yeah. him. Yeah, there's, you know, you can't defend yourself and pitch the ball at the same time. Well, the freshman will go off the field. He's two of six for 11 yards and an interception. You can be a robo quarterback, Dick, but you still can't take a hit like that. No, and I think it's a th uh, around his left arm or left hand more than it is his body as I see him go off the field. Shane Foley out of Newport Beach, a junior who played last week for the first time, hit three of four, comes in at quarterback. You know, I was impressed with him. The one thing they say about him, he's a good scrambler. They have to change their offense possibly with him in there. Second down and six. Straight ahead, Urbans. Urbans fighting inside the 25. He'll be three yards short of the first down. David Brown coming up to make the stop. There was some talk that Brown might not play today at a bad ankle. Also, Derek Eisenman. They're talking to him right there on the bench, Todd Marinovich. Third down and three. As of concern, of course, the six foot four freshman. Jackson and Wallace split out on the third down. On the option, Foley pitches back to Urban Lane. He's got the first down, 15 to the 11 yard line. David Brown again making the stop. So Foley comes in and does the job beautifully on the option. Again, again, this is the option play that they have not run before. It's the first time Ohio State's seen it. Now you have a lead blocker in this lead option. He's kicking out. He hits the lane there nicely. Number 34, Ricky Urban. Big game. USC is going to have to get either pressure on the quarterback quicker and force the pitch early. And the guy coming up to the pitch man has got to beat the block and get on that ball carrier. At the 11-yard line, first down for the Trojans. Unbalanced line, Gary. Yep, this is something they wanted to show Ohio State. Give to Urbans. He spins inside, close to the five. So Ricky Urbans, the starting tailback, had 180 yards last week. He is second in the Pac-10 in rushing, only to Greg Lewis of Washington. They can pick up a first down just about inside the one, and they're now resting at the six. Ricky Irvin's lived for six years with his high school football coach. Didn't have a family to live with, and this kid knows what it is to be tough, but, boy, he's got his uh, life squared away right now playing football at USC. Aaron Emanuel. And up. This time running the ball is Holt. Holt inside the five to the four. See, they can make a first down, as it appears from here, before they score, Gary. Yep, right at about the half-yard line area is where it'll be if they can do that. So they've come to a third down now. Third down and the ball resting inside the five. Be interesting to see if they have enough confidence in this young quarterback that really has no experience except playing last week uh, to go with a play-action pass or throw the ball in a straight drop back in this situation. The one thing you don't want to do is take a sack down here or, or turn it over. You're already in almost a guinea field goal situation. Ohio State with a three to nothing lead. The Buckeyes trying to protect that. What would you call, Gary? I'd run an option. Why not? Hey, good call. I think that's a good call. It's Foley's bit. He keeps it. Throws it. Touchdown. Got it. Three catches last week, but Larry Smith said we're not throwing enough to him. Hit him there. Beautiful fake by Foley. Point after attempt now by Quinn Rodriguez out of Mesa, Arizona. John Jackson to hold. The kick out. It's good. And it's a 7-3 to three game in favor of USC. So on fourth down, they're able to convert. They have to change quarterbacks, but they continue on. And Larry Smith's team now with a 7-3 to three lead. 11 minutes. 20 seconds left to go in this first half of play. Action starts away. 
right here. Now Vince Clark sort of loses him, and he slips out behind him. Here he goes. Very simple goal line play. A lot of people run this. Fake the run. Third and five. They're faking the run. Third and four. Faking the run. Tight end blocks down there. Now he slips out behind Vinnie Clark, number seven. He didn't see him. Actually, now Shane had the option to run or pass, but quarterbacks would rather score throwing. Look at this. Is he excited? That's his fourth career TD pass, and this guy is sort of a cheerleader. Oh, oh my gosh. Come on now. Come on. <laughs> well, the guy that's got to be excited is Shane Foley. Oh, well, you bet. It. You think he hasn't really come into a new level of play. So the drive engineered by Foley from the 27-yard line in after Marinovich went out with the injury. Grant Runnerstrom kicking off now. Bobby Olive has got it. Up to the 20-yard line. We oh. mentioned Marinovich. Let's go down and get an update. Here's Cheryl Miller. Well, Todd went out with a, with a wrist injury. Dr. Deal, the team physician, said that he's, he's curious on how it's going to feel, sprained wrist or fine and everything, but there's always a question on whether it might be fractured. He's handling the ball right now. He says it feels pretty good, but if there's any complications, they're going to take him into the locker room and get some further x-rays. Gary? Well, Cheryl, as you were speaking, you can see Marinovich warming up. Now, there's another Trojan shaking up. It's Ernest Spears, the cornerback. Spears on the coverage on that kickoff shaken up on the play he's a senior out of Oceanside and he's a hitter too this guy is the guy they really rely on in the secondary to set the tempo from a contact standpoint he likes to knock your helmet off well he had an interception having a tough time picking up the audio there from Pat Flood as looks like we're going to kick it over again is that a doctor with those hat and glasses Southern California they all wear shades here don't they? <laughs> We apologize for the microphone as uh, it looks like we're going to have it all over again. They're going to kick this time from the 30-yard line. We'll check Spears, too. Right now, USC getting some people beat up. Ellis hurt for Ohio State. Spears and Marinovich for the Trojans. Olive will go back deep again. He'll be joined there by Scotty Graham as Runnerstrom will kick off again. Runnerstrom uh, kicked a field goal last week against Houston State and will kick the longer field goals instead of Quinn Rodriguez. 7-3. The Trojans with the lead. Kind of a knuckleball this time. Olive will come over. There's a oh. return. Big return. Flag on the Flag. play. He's to the 50. Bobby Olive, only 160 pounds, running all the way to the 38. But as we mentioned, there is a penalty flag way back at the 28-yard line. I don't know how many times in my coaching career, Gary, I have seen the kickoff return man fumble the ball. I'm sure you fans have seen this in watching games. They fumble the ball and pick it up and run it for a big return. What happens is the kickoff coverage overruns the return man. They get downfield too far. Well, Deion Sanders a couple of weeks ago for Atlanta did that very thing on a putt and went all the way. Anyway, the penalties against Ohio State, so a 49-yard kickoff return will not stand. But Coach Smith does not forget they had success returning that ball, and he was upset because, you know, he coaches his own special teams. <laughs> now you got to find somebody else to chew on. You know? That's right. <laughs> There's nobody to chew on, is no, it? No, his, life, his wife's not down on the field with him. <laughs> Cheryl, she's not down there. You can't chew on her. <laughs> When you there's a Kovic there in a discussion with uh, John Cooper so the penalty now will mark it at the 18 yard line well Cooper found a guy to chew on <laughs> <laughs> His coaches are good at that Dick oh you bet I tell you especially the, the more intense the game becomes the, the more intense you become on the sideline so from the 18 the Buckeyes trailing for the first time of the game This is Scotty Graham, the fullback. The ball may have been fumbled. A big pileup at the 18-yard line. Never did see Scotty Graham come out of there. No, do you know what USC is doing now in the defense? Good adjustments made by the defensive coordinator, Chris Allen. They're starting to stem the defense, mean moving it right before the ball of snaps, showing them a look, changing the look. Did a good job. There's the Goodyear Blimp Columbia, based in Carson, California. Tom Mattis 
the pilot giving us that beautiful view here in Southern California at the 10-28 mark of see quarter him. number two. See him move that time, the defense gear? Yep, second and 10. Try complete to Graham, the fullback, and he'll be short of the first down out to the 26-yard line. Missed it by a pair of yards. Fry getting a little operating room. Kurt Barber was over there to make the stop, the sophomore out of Paducah, Kentucky. At the 26. Still two yards short of the first down. Third down and two. You saw the defensive team move. See him moving around there just a little bit. Fry sprinting back. Oh, no, can't get it. Nope, couldn't hang on to it. Jim Palmer said he had it. USC said he did not, and the officials agree. Incomplete pass. Palmer, of course, playing in place of Jeff Ellis, who went out earlier with the injury. He's a senior out of Londonville, Ohio. That's where they're going to miss Ellis. He is so tough in that situation. The other place they miss him, though, is blocking the outside linebacker or defensive end in the run game to get outside because he is physical. You know, like you said earlier, he put on that 20 pounds. Palmer Coleman played a lot of ball last year, though. Palmer played a lot last year. Cleveland Colders back. Beautiful nice punt. Beautiful. Colder running over, lets it oh. hit. I don't know if he lost it or what. He had to lose that in the sun. And at the five is where USC will start. I, I, that's about a 70-yard punt. 69, 69-yard punt. Hey, man. Looks I, like he looked up into the sun and yeah. did not find it. I know it, but it, it was a beautifully punted football. Bowman helps his average there, 69-yarder, 9.57 to go in the first half. The Trojans lead it. Uh, against Connecticut, short live. They're having a tough time today as they come back into the college football arena. Thank you for the update, Rogers. We now have, at the five-yard line, Todd Marinovich back in the football game. So after the hand injury, he checks back. Holt, the fullback. Wedges out for three yards. It'll bring up second down. Larry Smith says of uh, Leroy Holt, he's the best combination fullback runner blocker I have ever coached in my coaching career. That's quite a salute. Quite a salute. You talked about him being such a fiery competitor. Boy, you like to see that. The redhead, a left-hander. Yeah. Smart kid. 3.4 grade point average in coming out of high school. All the tools. Second down, a long five, almost six yards. Ricky Urbans. Urbans finds a little hole, comes out across the team to the 13-yard line. Ken Coleman made the stop. Well, Marinovich, the robo quarterback, they called him. His dad, Marv, really was involved in his life. And he is, feels he's very fortunate to have his dad that involved. So some people have misunderstood. They thought I was bred to be a quarterback, but uh, he gives his dad a lot of credit. They have a great relationship. Right. How about you and your dad? Your dad was your high school coach. That's I right. met him. He looked like a tough guy. I tell you, if you'd lose, you didn't go home and eat. <laughs> or get to eat. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Third down now. Two yards to go. From the five, Marinovich. Uh oh, good call. Double pump to Jackson, he's open. Jackson on a foot race. Vinnie Clark trying to catch up. Touchdown, USC. secondary stumble back there. Benny Clark tried to recover after he lost his footing, could not catch up. 
Rodriguez point after attempt on the way. The left foot is into the ball, and it's through the uprights. 14-3 in favor of the Trojans. As you... Here he is making the catch. John Jackson, already graduated from USC, working on his MBA right now, and right now he's working on getting in the end zone. And he is a coach's son. His dad, a former assistant at USC. Before you take a single picture, before you press the shutter, before you autofocus, before you operate the fully motorized extended range zoom lens, before you place it next to your eye, before you even touch it, you're going to want to own it. The incredible 35 millimeter Infinity Super Zoom 300 from Olympus. Getting to know you, getting to know all about you. Meet the 1990 Geo. Getting to like you, getting to hope you like me. In the 70s, you got to know a small car company called Toyota. In the 80s, Honda. Today, the 90s begin, and we invite you to get to know Geo. Getting to know you. At your Chevrolet Geo dealers. J.J., Johnny Jackson, a career-long 87-yard touchdown grab. <laughs> hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. <laughs> you know, one time I'm coaching in, in the NFL, and my mother calls me after a big game. She says, Dick, every time there's a game, you see the camera goes on the players, and, so, and they all say, hi, Mom. And the camera comes on you, and you never say, hi, Mom. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> so, Mom, the coaches aren't supposed to do that. <laughs> I tell you, your mother did a pretty good job raising you. She's just been with you. How old is she now? 76 going on 60. That's great. Runners tremble kickoff. Boy, that double pump by Marinovich really helped. What a competitor. Marinovich coming back from the hand injury and throwing the 87-yard touchdown on third and two. Bobby Olive waits at the five. To the 24-yard line, the Buckeyes now trailing 14 to three. Will have it. Let's go back and look at the touchdown toss again, ladies and gentlemen. What we're talking about on a double pump. Follow the quarterback here now in the middle of your screen as he drops back. Now watch his left arm. He sets up. He looks to his right there. He pumps once. Now that throws the defense. The receiver, in coordination with that pump, ran a quick short pattern and then took off and went deep. Well executed play, especially on third and two. Looking it up, it's a record for USC. An 87-yard touchdown catch. Jim Powers to Al Canton in 1949 was the old record of 80 yards. That surprises me. I would have thought they would have had that long a touchdown caught somewhere. Especially with the speed they've had on this campus. That's right. Earl McCullough and those kind of guys. From the 24, first down play action by Fry. He's trying to come right back. Bobby Olive is there. He's got it. A penalty flag. He gets up, but he is going to be marked at the 27. Bobby Olive caught that over Marvin Pollard. And I think Pollard made contact with him. I don't know if it's off. It, I think it's calling it offense. I think they're calling it on Bobby Olive. You can tell Cooper. Want to see this one again. I think he put his left hand out on him. Actually, Marvin Pollard should have intercepted that ball. So I think he might again lost it. Look at Cooper. Let's take an isolated look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Now watch number eight in the middle of your screen. See what he does with his left hand. Right there, I think he shoved off just a little bit. Well, that's a <laughs> little bit. If he did, if he did, you couldn't really see him go I was going to say, a little <laughs> bit is a uh, minimal shove. John, a minuscule John, shove. it won't do any good. <laughs> Boy, I don't know. I, Boy, is that a turnaround? I guess so. 48-yard turnaround, yep. is that right? That's right. It was a 48-yard completion. Instead, they're all the way back now to the 12-yard line. Penalties thus far. Boy, that's a big, big stopper as far as the Buckeyes are concerned. Would that have been something they'd come right back with a 48-yarder after having won 87 yards against them? Second down and 22. Fumble. The ball comes loose from Carlos Snow. And USC says they got it. 
and USC has the football. It was Tim Ryan who came up with it, and this game for John Cooper has done an about face. Here's the counterplay now. He gets the ball tucked away in there. He had, oh, no, he didn't. And I'll tell you, Gary, that's what happens when a running back doesn't practice all week. You just lose that little fine timing edge, and he fumbled one last week in the ball game with practice all week. That's too bad, but that's what happens many times when a guy doesn't get to practice. He practiced Monday. Then he had the fluid drained off his knee, and then he worked out a little bit later in the week, but not the kind of reps that you need. On Wednesday, he told me all he was going through was mental practice. He was just trying to visualize all the plays and stand behind the huddle and just pretend like he was carrying the ball. Boy, that's crazy. What a turnaround well, that is. You talk about a reversal. The Buckeyes got to be reeling right now. They need something defensively to happen for it. From the 10-yard line, Marinovich on a roll. Passes near side. Galbraith. Touchdown, USC. on the tight end right there as he sits and hesitates. It's an unbalanced line, meaning more linemen to the right, and he sits and pass protects. See? He sits there. They think he's an offensive tackle. No. He is an eligible receiver wearing number 86. Good job. Good coaching. And Rodriguez makes it 21-3, to and USC now has scored touchdowns on their last three possessions. And one of the big stories is Moretovich coming back from an injury to engineer two of those touchdown drives. 21-3, USC. Two touchdown catches to go along with J.J. John Jackson's 21-3. You look at this game, Dick. Three very costly penalties against Ohio State. This here's, is one of the penalties right here. Right here is, again, Balviali, number eight. Running the route there on Marvin Pollard, number six. And right there, they called him shoving off with his left hand. And it, and it led to this right here, the well-executed, what appeared to be a tackle-eligible formation, which is not legal. But this formation, it was legal because it was a tight end in that position. The other thing you got to remember, they had the late hit on Marinovich that hurt him. Yeah. Also, the 48-yard kickoff return Turned call, call back. back. So there's three big, big penalties against Ohio State that's cost him in the early going. Runners from kicking far side. Bobby Olive again. Oh, wow! He had a little running room that time. Oh. Able to get out to the 27-yard line. Did you see that kid go into the wedge? That's David Webb, 44 on the stop. Galbraith celebrating along with his teammates. Well, this football team was shocked early in the year. They lost to Illinois. Came back, kind of tuned their game up at the expense of Utah State. And today, after trailing early, three to nothing, maybe erupted. What Ohio State has to do now as, as an organiz organization, as a staff and a team, is to regain their poise and just forget all the negatives and try to regenerate the positive. James Bryant now is coming at running back. He didn't practice all week either. He had uh, muscle spasms in his back. In his back, bothering yeah. him a lot. Play action. Bryant trouble, scrambling around. He gets away He's from away. Owens and just throws it away. Dan Owens was in his face, and Fry did a good job avoiding a long loss on the play. Dan Owens can get after you. You know, he was an all pac 10 uh, player last year. The other day, and sitting in the training room, the defensive coordinator came in and visited with him, the defensive coordinator being Chris Allen, and asked him, what defense do you like the best? And the, and the young man told him, Owens told him, and I, later I said, what did you ask him that for? He said, because... He, he's a good player, and I want to give him the opportunity to do what he likes best. <laughs> he's a little overshadowed by Tim Ryan at the other side, but they think... He's quicker, I yeah, think. They think he's the fastest defensive lineman they have. Two good ones. Second down, 10. Fry, too tall on the far side. That was Palmer again, the tight end. Deshaun Burns was defending on the play. Bring up a third down, 10. The Buckeyes. Jumped on top three to nothing on a 40-yard field goal. And since that time, USC aided by some penalties, 
rolling to three touchdowns on three possessions. I don't think we'll see USC come with many blitzes because Ohio State did such a good job last week against Oklahoma State of handling all those variables, the linebacker dogs and the safety blitzes. The USC coaches are very, hey, they respect that and they don't want to take too many chances, especially with a lead. From the spread or the shotgun this time is Fry. Protection is excellent. Now breaking down, he just couldn't find anybody. The ball is loose. Ohio State may have gotten on it. I think Joe Stasniak. The offensive senior tackle was there to retrieve the ball. Cordell Swingy was there to knock it away. Here you're taking a look from the end zone. He had good protection. He had excellent protection. But as you watch the two linebackers in the middle of your screen up there, you'll see number 85 working in there palmer that's where they wanted to throw the ball the coverage took it away eventually the rush got there and stasniak very literally came up with it jeff bullman punting again it's a good one cleveland colder back at the 30 yard line oh clip up to the 40 there's a flag he's to the midfield stripe and colder brings it all the way to the 40 of ohio state but as dick mentioned there was a clip bullman who punted got over there to make the tackle yeah, that was obvious. Yeah. Holder playing with that knee, which he hurt last year, about at 95% efficiency. Playing because they've lost two punt returners in their first two games. <laughs> Larry Smith says he snake bit at that position. You know, every year you coach, you end up with one position that ends up like that. You can start with three guys, and, and all of a sudden, now you watch from the right of your screen, you'll see the clip. Here it is, number 40, hit it right there in the middle of the back. You cannot do that. Clip it. On the return, first and ten. That's Craig Hartsiker, the starting linebacker of a year ago that will be playing a lot of linebacker today. He's lost the starting job to Junior Seau, but... Uh, They're talking to him. So instead of starting from the 40 of Ohio State, the Trojans will have it at the 20-yard line. 6-17 left to go in this first half. 21-3 in favor of the Trojans. Marinovich in at quarterback. I don't think there could have been a better example of how fiery a competitor Marinovich is in coming back from that injury and getting this team rolling. I know, and you know something, the players, I think, have more belief in him right now than the coaches. The coaches are the ones that are concerned about inexperience and maturity. The players, they told me, he doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't, he, we just left the... Uh, Excuse me, we just wish the coaches would let him play. <laughs> John Jackson was very high on him. Yes, he was. Should be after that 87-yard pass, huh? <laughs> He's really high now. There's Urbans. To the 30. Check that. Aaron Emanuel, who's coming to the football game. Emanuel, out to just about the 30-yard line. Boy, is he a load. 225 pounds. Here's a young man that came to USC. You'll see him flash to the right of your screen. He came to USC as one of the most heralded running backs in the country. He came here, he started right out as a starter, and he hasn't really handled the pressure of being a USC tailback real well, but they really expect him now to, to sort of explode out and really become a good one. At the 29-yard line, first down on the run by Emmanuel. They go to him again. Nothing doing this time. The thing about Aaron Emanuel, he kind of put some pressure on himself. He said he was going to win a couple of Heisman trophies after coming out of Quartz Hills High School. But they say instinctively he's had to learn to quit running straight up. He doesn't have good body tilt where he carries the ball. He's just a big, strong guy who instinctively has had to work awfully hard at his technique. Second down, 10. There's a screen. Flip. And Emmanuel still on his feet to the 50. There's another penalty flag, two of them, three of them, in the vicinity of the 35-yard line. I think they call clipping on Mark Tucker, the big strong side guard, number 75. That's exactly what it is. This young defense of Ohio State really being tested. Seven new starters. Last year, Dick, they didn't have good team speed. They've improved that, but by improving it, they have a lot less experience. Well, I tell you, you know, clipping during the run, 
Repeat second down. You're better off to be talented <laughs> than uh, have more experience and not talented. I think they, they're inexperienced. They're, uh, they're talented kids. Here's the clip right there in the middle of your screen. Now watch, here he comes. Number seven, he's reaching out there right now, 75 C, and he ended up making contact right behind the legs. Clipping, not intentional. Mark Tucker, the All-American candidate. Tucker, by the way, they think could be their next All-American. They've had 24 All-Americans in the offensive line. <laughs> I coached against a lot of them, both in college and the pros. You made them All-Americans. Yeah, huh? they, they, I made them look smart. Second and 21 now. That was Galbraith again. Good coverage that time by Derek Eisenman. Well, we mentioned the uh, inexperience of this defense and the look graphically at that reaction. And he was talking about Alonzo Spellman, a freshman of Mount Holly, New York. That's a great quote. Yeah. If a dog is going to bite you, he'll bite you as a pup. He said that to Daryl Royal say. Yeah. <laughs> Meaning, hey, if a guy's inexperienced and he's good, it doesn't he, matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Alonzo Spellman, who we haven't seen yet, is going to be some player for him. He's only about 6'6", 255 pounds. Draw play. Yep. Leroy Holt on the end of that. Brings it out to the 25-yard line. But they've run out of downs. Fourth down. They'll have to punt the ball. Zach Dumas making this tackle for Ohio State. Jeff Graham will go back. You get the feeling that Ohio State, in the remaining four and a half of this first half, needs something positive to happen to take into the locker room. Well, they've had enough negatives, oh. you know, and, and created more by the flag. Costly penalty. Ron Dale will go back and punt. Dale came to USC because, as we mentioned earlier, Larry Smith works with the special teams, and he wanted to work with the head coach. Hit it high, but not very long. Graham comes up, makes a fair catch at the 44-yard line. That will go as a 31-yard punt that time by Dale. 21 to 3. The first of two games here. The Pac-10 Big Ten. And right now the Trojans enjoying the first half. There are a number of three and added to their misery is their brilliant tight end, Jeff Ellis. Just moments ago, this is on tape. He's been taken in to the locker room with a knee injury. That's going to hurt them, and hopefully he'll be able to return as they go home next week to meet Boston College. We're in the Coliseum. Gary Bender, Dick Vermeil, and Cheryl Miller. 21-3 in favor of USC. 14 miles to the northeast of here tonight. Prime time coverage. Michigan and UCLA on ABC. The Rose Bowl. First down from the 44. Sprint draw handoff. James Bryant, no place to go. Matt Key, number 48, and also on that play was Bryant to Leo. To Leo and also Key, and they have their backup linebackers in there now. Here's the scoring summaries. We mentioned Ohio State getting on top first, and then on three straight possessions, USC striking. One of those, Shane Foley coming in as a quarterback when Marinovich was hurt through a touchdown pass, and then Marinovich came back through the longest touchdown pass in Trojan history to John Jackson. And they added another one to Galbraith. When Snow was back in. Kylo Snow returning. First appearance since that fumble. Second and 11. Brian hit from behind, and the end result is incomplete. Junior Seau, number 55, is just a little too quick for the average great big tackle. That's a linebacker coming down, and he gets down in that three-point stance from the outside, and upfield he comes. He'll be coming from the left side of your screen. Number 79, Joe Stasniak, because he gets turned too quick. See, too late, and here he is. He gets right in the middle of his back. Boy, that's tough as a quarterback when well, you can't see him coming. Boy, you want to know what happened to your backside help, don't you? Yeah. Say I'll play with one hand's not bad, huh? Third and 11. Palmer, Olive, and Graham now all flanked out. Ohio State needs something good to happen. And there it is. The catch is made. That should be enough for the first down by Jeff Graham inside the 45. So Graham latches onto it. 
This reminder, the Prudential College scoreboard with Roger Twible will be coming up at our halftime. We'll have scores, highlights, a preview of our Big Ten, Pac-10 primetime matchup between the Wolverines of Michigan and the Bruins of UCLA. That's a big catch for Ohio State. They start to build and put things back together. I was very impressed with Greg Fry. Alex, Alex, he got back in his drop, set there, let the thing develop, slid up inside the pocket, and fired accurately. 13-yard gain. Fry back. Say Al again. Yes, here he is, number 55. Fry gets rid of it. They're going to call it. No, I don't think so. I think he had a man close enough. Uh, yeah. Carlos Snow, it's not intentional grounding, and now we have an argument going on. Dan Beatty, the center, and Junior Seau getting into it. Boy, Fry is going to have nightmares about Seau. Well, what happened now, Seau has been taking the hard outside rush. Seau has been taking the high, hard outside. See, here he is here. He's been going outside. So this time, he started outside and went back up underneath. And boy, is that frustrating to an offensive lineman when he doesn't know where his help is going to be. See, he starts outside. He's going to stop him from beating him outside. Uh-oh, he gave him too much room inside, and a man with that kind of quickness just drives you crazy. Whoa. That's an impressive move. He has it. He's the most impressive defensive player on the field there Thursday when we watched him there. Second down, 10. Counter. Snow trying to go wide. And maybe a yard, and that's all. Third down coming up. That was Carrier. They call him Aircraft Carrier. He's trying to become the first three-time All-American at USC since Richard Batman Wood. Remember and, him? You know, and you know how tough I am on calling a guy an All-American. We have too many All-Americans nowadays, and we don't make them earn them. But this guy, he's an All-American. He's something. He, he's Mr. Smooth. Mr. Smooth is right. He says, I think the pac is better than the Big Ten. We haven't backed it up. But he right now is his team leading 21 to 3. Third down, still nine yards. Audible, he's audibly on the line of scrimmage. Fry straight back. Going up the field, the catch is made. And that'll be the tight end, Jim Palmer. Yeah. And that will be enough for the first down. So Ohio State reeling here in the second quarter, starting now to get it going. They have 148 left in this first half. First down as they stop the clock to move the change to the 32. You know, he called an audible, and the class was complete, but the wide receiver, Bernard Edwards, number two, didn't hear the audible, and he was over there blocking for the run. It's a good thing he didn't look to throw it. Good him. think, huh? <laughs> All of us in. Now, Greg Beatty out of Missouri City, Texas, a freshman is in at wide receiver. Fry near side, Carlos Snow makes the catch, and for all of that, they'll pick up very much yardage. A couple of yards is all, and now Ohio State will call a timeout. That was Deshaun Burns over to make the stop for the Trojans. So that Fry is really showing some pretty good poise on this drive. Well, that time he had a little time, and the reason he had a little time, they doubled up on Seau. The offensive lineman blocked him, and then a back came in and helped on him. They put two guys on him. Fry looks like he's a little tired, and you can understand why. As warm as it is today, as we showed you earlier, it's 110 on the field. Even though it was hot in Columbus, it's still awfully hard for that adrenaline flowing, not to get to hyperventilating early in a heat like this. You know when that sometimes bothers you as a quarterback? The perspiration runs down your hands, and all of a sudden you're dropping back, and you grip the football, and you can't get the good grip on it. Well, with that face mask, you can't tell whether he's sweating or not. You know, I had the opportunity to sit in on a quarterback meeting with Rod Hudson and this young man, Greg Fry, the other day. And college football has become so much more sophisticated since I coached it all the way back. My last year in college was uh, 75. It has changed. They, they ask him to do a lot more today, Gary. There's the numbers on Fry. The heat, well... It's not as hot. Now only over 100. <laughs> not as hot. <laughs> it was down to 110 earlier. Don't you feel cooler now? I tell you, when you're behind, it, it gets hotter regardless of the temperature. That's a good point. Second down now coming up. Eight yards to go from the 30. Ohio State with two timeouts left. Comes in motion. Sprint draw fake. Fry in trouble. 
And he throws the ball. They're going to rule him down yeah. at the 39. He was hit from behind by Dan Owens. Junior Seau was there. It'd be easier to mention who wasn't around him as Ohio State really didn't protect Fry on that one. He had everybody completely circling him on the play. They use the play action protection in this situation because many times your play action protection is a little bit better. But say how number 55 came around the outside. There's Randy Hort, 66. He's just now say how's got him right now in the grass. They're going to call it right there. <laughs> Better give those offensive linemen a hay hook to grab a hold of say as he goes by. Third and 17 now. Loss back to the 39. Now same fake. Fry throwing up the field, and right. the intended receiver was Edwards at the 15-yard line. He had him open. He just thrown it too high right now. That's two seam patterns, a crossing pattern into the seam that he's thrown too high already in this last oh, last five minutes. Come on, Greg, lower your sights. <laughs> Look at that mass. See, you can't see his eyes. That's right. Huh? Last week, a career day for him. He came out in the second half against Oklahoma State and missed only one pass. Remember what he did against Michigan in the final yep. game last year in the second half. He put 31 points on the board in the second half against Michigan. And that's tough to do. Yes, it is. My Eagle teams couldn't have done that. <laughs> now, Omaro is coming in to attempt a field goal. And right now, timeout is called by USC. Let's take this opportunity now to go down to Cheryl Miller. She has a very interesting guest. Thank you, Gary. With me is the talented forward for the Los Angeles Lakers, A.C. Green. And there's a lot of people in Oregon that are going to be very mad that you're down here on the side of SC and cheering them on. Everyone in Oregon knows that I'm really supporting the Pac-10. You know, I love Oregon State. If I'm in town when USC, Oregon State play, I will be here. And, of course, rooting for Oregon State. But I'm a big fan of the Pac-10 and Pac-10 football. And so let's go Trojans. Now, what capacity are you working with the players here at USC? Well, really, sure. what I work with is a ministry called Champions for Christ. And, you know, really, we try and emphasize educational, uh, building up their educational background as well as their academic background and, of course, in the athletic field. We want them to also become as best they can athletically. But a lot of times they forget the spiritual part in the sense that knowing that there is a spiritual side to every person. And that's something that we want to build up. Uh, myself and Thomas Rodnick, the team chaplain. So that's what we're doing. I've been to every game thus far this season, so hopefully I can keep coming. All right, well, there's no three-peat, no Kareem. Are the Lakers going to do it? Sure, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. I can't wait. we got about two weeks before we get started, and we're going to see what's going to happen once we get the training camp. But I feel very confident about how it's going to be this year. And you're going to be the man doing it, leading them, right? Hey, that's what it's all about. I love being the leader. All right, thank you, AC. Back to you, Gary. Thank you, Cheryl. I think the Pistons will be very interested in that interview. This is going to be now a field goal from... 56 yards. The longest in his career yeah. is 46. And he did not hit it well at all. Yeah. So again, kicking without the tee this year, they've had to adjust their sights. They've had different approaches to the ball. Omaro did not hit it well. 56-yard attempt. So Omaro now in the game is one of three. Well, he knew he was really stretching his distance, his ability to kick the ball. And it's just like taking the golf club. If you swing it a little too hard, you don't hit it very well. You know? So we have 34 seconds left in this first half of play. A game that started with Ohio State jumping on top and then USC striking quickly. And this guy on the last two. Don't forget now the Rose Bowl. Michigan, fifth ranked against UCLA. You talked to Terry Donahue last night. Yeah, I know it. And he feels his football team is just starting to come on and he expects them to play a lot better. Dropping to a knee is Marinovich. A little shoving and pushing going on. I would imagine Bo has worked on his special teams this week. <laughs> oh, God. You know, Bo might be listening to you, and we have to go in there one day and knock our head off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey. We saw Bo in the uh, hotel. And he looked great, didn't he? Yeah, he did. You know, there's no coach is immune to the kickoff return. Yeah. I mean, uh, you take it for granted sometimes that they're going to cover them all, but, and it, hey, things go wrong. Well, we're going to see the remaining seconds tick away here. So now let's go out to the field and pick up some of the pageantry of college football. The Spirit of Troy, University of Southern California Trojan Marching Band.
21-3, and Dick, uh, we were just talking earlier, Ohio State really had a good game plan. They came out, they marched well, they missed a field goal, came back, had three to nothing lead, and then bang. Well, they had the things went wrong. The penalty, I think, really was the big turnover. The missed field goal bothered them, too, I think, a little bit. USC started to erupt, and interestingly enough, it happened after Todd Marinovich was out of the ball game. He got hurt, and <laughs> Shane Foley came in, and he got them on the scoreboard. Did a nice job with this pa action pass. We're going to see how Galbraith catching the touchdown pass as his first of two. Here he is at the right side of your screen. See, so blocked down. They lost him in the coverage. Took his eyes off him. Lays it and actually could have changed, could have run the ball in there for the score. They made it seven to three, and then an exciting play, the longest touchdown pass in USC history. The little on a double pump here. A little pump and go right in the middle, middle of your screen. He gives it a fake, and then he lays it up. Third and two, a very good call by Ray Dorr, the quarterback coach who calls the plays. That's a gutsy call. And Vinnie Clark, Jackson. number 10, he's going to chase him, but you're not going to catch that guy. But Clark had fallen down, tried to catch up with John Jackson, and Jackson, running with everything he had, took it 87 yards. It was 14 to 3. And then something you mentioned really hurt Ohio State, and here it is, the penalty. The penalty on Bobby Ali. They called him for offensive shoving off right here with his left arm. I think it's a lousy call. I can't. I, Why don't you, know, you say what you my, think? Yeah, I, I can't. I just... You gotta let guys play football, and you can see that it really doesn't change the direction. His hand did get on Pollard, number six, but gosh, that's a tough call. And then coming back, Marinovich, this time able to hit his tight end, Galbraith, who's having a big day. This was a trick play. A tight end playing in a tackle position in an unbalanced line. Here he comes in. Surprise element, good execution, good play. Galbraith with two touchdown catches in the first half, and USC with a 21-3 lead. We're going to be back now with the kickoff of the second half here from the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Very good kick. Two men over on the far side. It's going to be Wallace that will bring it out, and he's dumped there at the 17. Good tackle in the open field. Flying up there was Jay Cook, who plays both ways for this team. He plays a linebacker. They also use him as a zoom tight end. Yeah, the movement tight end in their goal line and short yardage. He was a tight end and wide receiver a year ago. They moved him to linebacker this year, and he's done a good job. Here comes Marinovich. Marinovich resurrected in that first half after the hand injury. Coming back, directing the team to their second and third touchdowns. Line of scrimmage, the 17-yard line. The Buckeyes of Ohio State, after jumping on top three to nothing, now trail 21 to three. Yeah. Very good kick. Two men over on the far side. It's going to be Wallace that'll bring it out, and he's dumped there at the 17. Good tackle in the open field. Flying up there was Jay Cook, who plays both ways for this team. He plays a linebacker. They also use him as a zoom tight end. Yeah, the movement tight end in their goal line and short yardage. He was a tight end and wide receiver a year ago. They moved him to linebacker this year, and he's done a good job. Here comes Marinovich. Marinovich resurrected in that first half after the hand injury. Coming back, directing the team to their second and third touchdowns. Line of scrimmage, the 17-yard line. The Buckeyes of Ohio State, after jumping on top three to nothing, now trail 21 to three. Yeah. Ricky Urbans, and Urbans breaks a pair of tackles. And he's got a first down. What a run by Urbans to the 34. I'll tell you, they're, they're showing the coaching staff is gaining confidence in Todd Marinovich. Here they are, deeper in their own territory. First play of the second half, Gary. Hey, what are they doing? They're throwing a quick screen. Take a look at this from the... Here he is. He's going to throw to his left. Now watch the offensive lineman. They're out in front of him. They get a kick-out block right there. He's up underneath. Good body control. Good balance. Pat Thomas, the nose guard, coming all the way over to get in on the play. Out of Pasadena, Muir High School, Ricky Irvins. First down, out to the 34. Irvins again. Good bounce. This time hemmed in, but gets some running room across the 40 to the 42, about a yard short of the first down. Jim Peel over to make the stop. What a great job he did of bouncing to the outside there on Jay. That's it. Tommy Lee's number 81. He bounced it. Look at the footwork, Garrett. 
Look at that footwork. Good balance. When you have that low center of gravity at five foot eight, you can make your body do a lot of things a six foot four guy can't do. What was he telling us? He was parking cars in 1987 at the Rose Bowl and playing there the next two years. 88, <laughs> no. 89. You think your stock goes up? Yeah. He's like trying to tackle a, a bowling ball with razor blades. You know. <laughs> he's tough. Second down, two yards to go from the 41, the Trojans. Coming right at him with Irvins again, and it looks like he's got enough for the first down. Tom Lees, one of the redshirt freshmen playing at outside linebacker, made the stop. Let's look at the stats, Dick, in the first half. OSU had the better of it in the first quarter, but look how they ended after two quarters. 230 yards of total offense. And then, you know, if I were Ohio State, if they could get them stopped here, I wouldn't change my approach from what I did in the first quarter right off the bat. I'd try to reestablish that running game and mix in the pass because they're not the kind of team that likes to throw on every down. That's not their style of football. Also got to quit making those critical mistakes. Oh, that fumble by Carlos Snow in their own territory, that was a killer. From the 43, first down. Wallace and Scott split out. Marinovich on the option. And he's close to the 50-yard line. Eric Eisenman over there to make the stop for the Buckeyes. If you'll remember back in the first half, the play that Todd hurt his arm on was an option. And he's coming right back with it. He's getting confidence. You can just see as the game wears on. You mentioned the coaches have confidence in him. He looks much more confident now. Well, they're demonstrating it, I think, more today than they did, especially against Illinois in the very first game of the season. And last week, they didn't have to against Utah State. They just handed the ball off and said, go. Second down and five. John Jackson in motion. There's a screen. It's Urban's on the receiving end. And got back to about the line of scrimmage, and that's all. It'll be third down coming up. Tom Lease, number 81, again on the stop. Lease the red shirt, as is Derek Foster, the other outside linebacker. We're at the Los Angeles Coliseum. 80,000 on hand for this one. USC and this football team from Ohio State tangling once again the 20th meeting between the two, but the first time they've met here in the Coliseum since 1963. And after trailing early, USC enjoys a 21 to 3 lead. Third and five. Irvinson holding the backfield. This time from the shotgun is Marinovich. On target. Catch is made by Leroy Hope. First down to the 37 of Ohio State. Penny Clark. He, he is really the emotional leader of the football team. And, and Larry Smith told us the other day that the one thing we really lack in the offense is the leadership we, or the kind of leadership we got from Rodney Pete a year ago. Now, a fullback can give it to you, but as Marinovich grows, I think he can start giving the leadership. Well, the one thing they're concerned about, they need to rest hold. They don't have a lot of depth at fullback, and we have a man shaken up for Ohio State. Vinnie Clark is He's the guy there. that made the tackle. So Clark looked, being looked at. He made the big pass interception last week and returned it. Did a nice job. But I think the one he's remembering, though, is the one where John Jackson got behind him <laughs> for 87 yards. Yeah. I'm not sure that was all his coverage. I'm really not, Gary. I'm not so sure there wasn't a safety supposed to roll over there with him, and he was playing up. He had position, but he just stumbled. Couldn't get back, and the double pump really made the difference. <laughs> you know he used to double pump all the time? Remember John Unitas? No, Almost I every remember. time he coached back. against him. You worked with him in the broadcast yeah. booth. Huh? Remember that? He'd always double pump. Yeah. He'd every... look you off, too. Yeah. First down. 39 yard line. Going to have a reverse. Pitch come to Larry Wallace. And Ooh. Ohio State stayed home. And in particular, Zach Dumas. He played that one very well. Very fine play by Dumas. That could have been a big gainer. Wallace can really run and look at this. Notre Dame, they won it, but it wasn't easy. I think Michigan State is going to end up being a pretty good football player. That was a pitch play. They normally pitch to the tailback, and the flanker back came back on the reverse. Larry Wallace, they have some burners out there. He had two touchdown catches last week against Utah State. You could have caught one last week. <laughs> Second down, nine. Counter gap. Irvins struggling forward. This time, Eisenman again on the stop. Jim I like Peel that guy. also there. 
That Derek Eisman, you know, you, you know why he can fight here. He's fighting out there right now. The reason you mentioned Eisman, he was out of football a year ago, tried out for the U.S. Olympic team, and ended up being an alternate. And Eisman really welcomed to have him back at that linebacker spot. There's where they had the Olympics in 84, the swimming competition here in the USC area. The McDonald Pool, and now at the 38-yard line, third and still nine yards to go. Marinovich, good rush by Derek Foster. Foster had him, and they throw it incomplete. Marinovich showing some real strength that time because this guy, Foster, could not get him off his feet. Converted a long loss, but it will bring up fourth down. Derek Foster, now he's another one of those redshirt freshmen. Six foot five, 240 pound, 19 year old kid from D Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> he had a chance at to get his first sack. He's had two operations on his hips. <laughs> That's an interesting story. Yeah. Huh? Out of a junior high and uh, come back from that very well as Graham goes back to receive the punt. Ron Dale, the punt. Hits it high. Got too much of it, though. It's going to make it into the end zone. Invariably, they always do. 37-yard <laughs> punt. Ohio State will take over at the 20-yard line. The Buckeyes fighting uphill right now. They trail 21-3. 9.34 left in the third. The rich that beautiful, majestic setting here. The Coliseum. Let's go down now on the Coliseum floor. Here's Cheryl Miller. Thanks a lot, Gary. Missing for, from the Ohio State lineup will be Jeff Ellis. He is out for possibly the remainder of the season. The doctor said that he has torn ligaments in his knee and that he will undergo surgery as soon as possible. Back to you, Gary. Wow. Oh, Boy, that bad. really hurts. That's a lot. That's too bad. And talking about him being the premier tight end in the country by next year, that'll oh, slow his back. progress. Oh, He'll yeah. But they're going to miss him. They have a fine medical staff there at Ohio State. He'll be back. Graham and Snow, the running back. So Buckeyes from the 20-yard line. Here's Snow. Fumbled uh, he fumbled the ball again yes, at the 25-yard line. Cleveland Colder came up and really put a pop on him. Snow, you know, he fumbled earlier at that end of the field. He's taken out of the lineup for a while. No damage done here, however. And he fumbled last week. Buckeyes able to get it out to the 25, a pickup of five. Edwards in the ball game now, split to the near side. Jeff Graham to the top. Greg Fry with a play action fake. Wide open, near side is Palmer, and that'll be a first down. Out across the 35 to the 36 yard line, Delmar Chesley over to make the stop. So Palmer now playing in the absence of Jeff Ellis. He's got a couple of passes in this game. You have another tight end, Rich Huffman, who they also, I'm sure, are going to have to now press into service more. But Palmer getting the uh, call after Ellis went out with an knee injury. First down now at the 36-yard line. Ohio State scoring way back at the 4-18 mark of the first quarter. Trailing 21-3. Jeff Graham broken up, and that was a big play at the last moment by Dwayne Garner because Graham would have had a very good opportunity to take that one all the way. Nice post pattern being run there. Good defense, as you said. Here it is, the left side of your screen. Here Graham's pushing. See Graham widening. Now he moved to the inside. Now watching the ball all the way, he comes and flicks that with his left hand right across. Avoids pass interference. Excellent defense. Big defensive play. Garner out of Oakland. Skyline High School. Second down, 10. Great try with a deep drop. Over the middle to Snow. Snow breaks the tackle. 45. Excellent running effort, and Snow has another first down. If Snow would have waited for Palmer to help him instead of running by him, he would have broken a bigger play. We're going to see from the end zone. As you watch here, just focus your attention on the running back right here, Carlos Snow. It's not He's not the primary receiver in the pattern. 
See, he's just sitting there, little crossing pattern, Palmer cross, see? He gets his hands up. Now watch what I'm talking about. Palmer, the tight end will appear. He's in front of him. Instead of letting him get down there and get that block, he runs by him. Lack of experience. Still an 11-yard pickup. First down at the 47-yard line. Snow again. Got running room. He's to the USC end of the field, the 48-yard line this time. Ernest Spears up to make the stop. Well, you know, Ohio State last year, remember that Michigan game? They were trailing 20 to nothing at half, scoring 31 in answer points. They're uh, trying to maybe put something together in the second half. I, I like what they're doing, though, Gary. They're not panicking. They're doing what they did well in their very first quarter. Running the ball, mixing it up, a couple passes, but not just going bombs away. Second down and four. Carlos Snow playing on that knee that's given a lot of trouble. He's come out of the football game now. James Bryant checks in. Seven and a half minutes left in the third quarter. 21 to three, USC. Fry running away from trouble. Flag on the play. Oh, throws my incomplete. Gosh. My God. I think Dan Beatty's going to be called for holding. He was trying to protect Fry. There's flags everywhere. The ball intended for Bryant. I tell you, Jeff Graham was wide open coming down inside on a square in pattern. Dan Beatty holding. Yep. Dan Beatty's the big offensive center from Liverpool, Ohio. He's a business major. You know, Gary, he wants to be a lawyer. On the offense, 10 yards from the previous spot. They're calling a holding right here. Number 76, Dan Beatty. Now, he wants to be a lawyer. You know, if he can't block him, he could always sue him, you know? <laughs> well, he could plead his case anyway. <laughs> there he tackled him. He got beat there. But, boy, there was a man wide open downfield. Too bad. Beatty's the only uh, guy who's not a senior in that starting lineup. Great Davidson, student, Coles, too. Moxley, and Stasniak are all seniors. On the Big Ten All-Academic Team in 1988, a smart young man. He's good. good thing he's got another year. Second down now, 14 yards to go from the spread goes Fry. Over the middle, it Excellent. looked like that ball was tipped or it certainly was not well thrown. Jeff Graham, the intended receiver. I think Owens tipped it. Number 90, Dan Owens, I think, was able to get his hand on that ball. Dan Owens has been all over the place today. You know, he's not the All-American. The All-American is Tim Ryan, but when you study the films, Dan Owens is just as good I'll tell you that, he does a lot. There he is, getting the hands up. Good instinctive move, and he's done that a lot of times. He has knocked down, in his career, 28 passes. Make it 29 now. Make it 29 now. From the 43-yard line, third and 14. Shotgun formation. Well, he's got the time. The receiver fell, fell down. down. That was Bernard Edwards who made his move at the 38 fell down. Spears defending. And so Ohio State all of a sudden after that holding call can't get their offense back on track. It's really tough against a good football team like USC to make up within one series for the mistake you made, either holding, clipping, or whatever it may be. It is really tough. That's Colder going back for the punt from Jeff. Look out, a big rush. They almost got it. Just got it underway. Taking a good Ohio State bounce, going all the way down to the 11-yard line. You know, in the years that Larry Smith was at Arizona, the Wildcats blocked 26 kicks. So his teams have always been good, coming after the football. He must coach the heck out of it. Well, he's a special teams coach. Why not? 21-3, USC with the lead. Columbia not only here but will also be headed to the Rose Bowl I understand they have to refuel and the pilot Tom Mattis from Huntington Beach California is up there they got to disappear here for a while fuel up and be ready for the big one tonight the primetime game between Michigan and UCLA from the 12 yard line USC with the football and with the lead 21 to 3 one back attack two tight ends Foster Paltz, by the way, is coming at cornerback for Ohio State. Ricky Irvin's no place to go. He's going to lose yardage on this one. Good reaction by Tom Lease. Lease has been called quite a few times today. He's done a very good job. You know, and normally when you get in that formation in a, for a running situation, you go check with me, meaning you call a run right or left, and you set the direction 
once you get up on the line of scrimmage according to the defense. Again, they're getting away from some of those tendencies. And yes, Larry Smith tendency. really wants to change the look. Illinois. There's the other uh, Big Ten, Pac-10 battle today. California and Wisconsin, three of them. Second down, they lost two. Second and 12. Urban. Here he goes. Out to the 20. 25, first down. Just like that, he was in the secondary. David Brown over to make the stop eventually. But they get out of a deep second and 12 back in their own end of the field. Urban's having a big afternoon. 15-yard game there, 104 yards. Direct your attention on a little counter. Oh, my toes are not working again. Direct your attention to the deep back as he steps to his right. Now, that timing step allows the big lineman to pull across the formation and block the point of attack. Block the point of attack they did. Out to the 25-yard line. Marinovich to Urban's again. Urban gang tackled at the 28-yard line. Again, a three on the play. Steve Tovar, number 58, an outstanding-looking first-year man, freshman, over to make the stop. Here's his numbers. 106 yards coming off of 180-yard day last week. Well, not exactly a picturesque day of downtown Los Angeles. Skyline in the back obliterated a little bit. It's hot here, unseasonably warm. Here's that two cut it. Second and seven, Urban. Come on. To the 31-yard line. Oh, oh flag on the play. Tovar over there again to make the stop. Tovar, remember that name. You're going to hear a lot about him. Steve Tovar has really caught the attention of the Ohio State coaches. Holding against USC. Larry Smith. Well, we talked to A.C. Green a while ago about the three-peat of the Lakers. Well, they're talking about a three-peat for USC. Three straight Pac-10 championships. You know, Larry Holding. Smith made the comment. Ten yards in the previous spot. Repeat second down. Made the comment the other day. Said you know the one thing about coming to USC, you didn't have to worry about building a tradition of winning. It was already here. What you worry about is just keep him winning. Going to his uh, room and all the Heisman Trophy winners are on the wall there. It made me nervous bringing back all the memories of trying to beat those people one time or another. Uh, when was the last time you were here as a coach? I brought my Eagle team in here in about 1977, I think first game of the season, and got beat by Chuck Knox's team. Back to throw, Marinovich. Scrambling out, dumps it off to Urbans, but Eisenman was there. Good play by Derek Eisenman. He stayed where he was supposed to be, read it well, and made the stop in the line of scrimmage to the 20-yard line. They really like that guy. He, he likes to fight. <laughs> in more ways than one. But we have quite a, a group here of pugilists. Talked about Eisenman. And we talked about Jeff Ellis's dad being the ex-heavyweight champion of the world. And then Tim Ryan was quite a boxer. Yeah. The defensive end for the Trojans. I think you're saying he won five junior Olympic boxing championships. Tim Ryan did. Marlon Washington is coming to wide receiver out of the Kansas City, Kansas area. Foot to the near side. Third down, 14. From the shotgun, Marinovich. Jackson's there. Jackson got it. Out of bounds. For 41, yep, it's a catch to the 41-yard line, 20-yard gain, and Ben Clark over to make the stop. What a day John Jackson is having. Here's Jackson at the top right-hand side of your screen. What he does is he comes down. Now, watch him go underneath the rolled-up coverage, man. See, he's playing short outside. Now, he breaks away from the safety who's playing too deep, dividing the field in half, and beats him to the sideline. It's tough coverage unless that corner who's rolling up does a better job. Let's see if he gets both feet down. One down. That's all you got to have. All you have to get is one. He got her down. Two catches for 107 yards. The 87-yard bomb, the longest in USC history. Urbans. And Urbans on the first down, carries for a yard. Tom Lease made the stop. And that's Steve Tovar again on the stop. Jackson, by the way, came into this game 18 catches short of becoming the all-time leading receiver at USC. I really enjoyed my conversation with him the other day. You know, he sort of zeroed in on me, came over, we visited for a little while, and he's the guy that said, Coach, this quarterback, the coaches are more worried about him than we are the players. We think he's ready to play. He's in the NBA program. He says, boy, is it hard. Yeah. In fact, he said he belongs. 
There he is on the stage. Gary Wellman, his first catch of the season. And Wellman takes her all the way inside the 20 to the 19. Then Clark is over there, and Wellman has jet. He's the fastest player on this team. Had been shut out in the first two games, did not catch a football, and here he latches onto one and goes 38 yards. Westlake Village, California. Gary Wellman. He's only 5'9, 175. Up on the top of your screen, two ways to beat a two deep zone, dividing the field in half. Fade down the sideline on the outside, or do as Jackson did a minute ago and go underneath and then go to the corner. Two different ways to get to the same spot. Marinovich just growing as this game wears on. Throwing end zone. Out to the side, top for the touchdown, and it's Wellman. after not catching the ball for almost two and three quarters of a game has latched on to two back-to-back -back. one for the 19-yard touchdown and Rodriguez makes it a 28 to three game in favor of the Trojans this is really a nice throw left hander he lets her go now Wellman is a guy that he has great speed this guy can really fly he was fifth in the state in high school track 100 meters and Marinovich is starting to make a bold statement about what kind of player he's going to be. He touchdown passes as USC is bolted to a 28-3 lead. You think he's talking to his dad, or is he talking to Ray Dorr, the quarterback coach? He can call anybody he wants to. Maybe the president of the United States the way he's playing right now. Well, he came to USC having thrown for 75 touchdown passes in his high school career, threw for 9,194 <laughs> yards. That's unbelievable. Well, that last drive was impressive. They went 88 yards in eight plays. Olive and Scram back deep. Runner Strimble will kick off. 12th ranked USC really putting on a show here today. Bobby out of deep. He won't return that one. Bring it out to the 20 yard line. Let's go to New York now. Here's Roger Twible. Okay, thank you very much, Gary. Final now. Notre Dame has beaten Michigan State 21 to 13. Early on in the first quarter, Rice recovers, pitches to Waters, watching turn on the Jets. He'll go 53 yards for the touchdown. He had two touchdown runs on the day, 13 carries, 85 yards. And Notre Dame wins at 21-13. Next Saturday, noon Eastern time here on ABC, we'll have Notre Dame and Purdue. Let's go back to the Coliseum and Gary Benny. Roger, thank you. USC with this lead of 28-3. Ohio State after the kickoff, starting from the 20-yard line. Buckeyes need something good to happen. Play action by Fry, running for his life, gets rid of it. Jeff Graham rolls up with the catch, oh, and that'll be a first down. And a flag back at the 18-yard line. I going to be against USC. I think they called a personal foul on 55, Junior Seau. Coach Smith, you can smile at this time in the game when you're at 28-3 and your player commits a foul. But when you're losing and they do it, it turns the grin the other way. passer on the defense. And fourth from the end of the run, first and ten. Well, that's a big game. Yeah. They pick up the completion as well as the 15-yarder. You'll see right here, he's in the middle of your screen. Now, here comes a hit. Yeah, he, he made too many steps before he got there. Yep. Yeah. By sometimes, the way. Sometimes he, you drop your helmet a little bit, and you can't really see when he lets the ball go. By the way, Larry Smith didn't think his team practiced well this week. Remember? Yeah. We'll talk about that. Yeah, that was a kick. Maybe better practice that way everyone Wednesday. I guess so. From the 49 after the penalty and the completion. Ohio State with a first down. And that one was intercepted. Matt Keyes got it out of Arc City, Kansas. To the 50. To the 45. The 40 and goes out of bounds.
key, they say, is just a younger Scott Ross, who's an all pac 10 linebacker. What depth they have at linebacker. It's obvious that he did not see Matt Gee dropping to the right side of your screen. He's trying to hit the back down the seam. There's Gee right there, number 48. Now, this guy is a gifted athlete. He can run through the javelin 240 feet. The only mistake he made there is didn't let the other lineman catch up and get in front of him and block the one guy that needed to be blocked. 27-yard interception return to the 35. Gee playing behind Chesley. Scott Ross, they've got Kurt Barber. Hart Syker, what depth they have at linebacker. They're too deep, but every spot. Tulio also. Trojans from the 35. Marinovich off to Ricky Irvins. Irvins for about two yards, and Eisenman there. What I started to say a while ago, Dick, was Larry Smith came in at the end of practice Wednesday, and he was incensed. He thought his football team had not practiced well. There's quite a story that developed after all of that. Yes, and then the coaches looked at the practice film, and they found out that the, the players, the offensive and defensive starters, had a great practice. It was the backup players that didn't do very well. In fact, uh, Marinovich threw 85% complete. So the next day, he goes back, and he apologizes. Coach Smith apologizes to the squad for chewing him out. He said he's just a cantankerous old 40-year-old, and Scott Galbraith, the tight end, got up and says, you're right, Coach, you are. <laughs> there is Irvin. Very close to the first down. Eisman on the stop at the 25-yard line. I don't think the word was cantankerous. No, he, you, you used the proper word in his place, though. <laughs> Ricky Irvin has nailed down that tailback spot. The start of the year, Aaron Emanuel was there. They thought Scott Lockwood would, but he injured a thumb. As you take a look at this right here, watch what the counteraction does to the linebackers. It freezes them and allows those linemen to get over there and create that running lane. See that right there? That's what that counteraction does. From the 25-yard line, third down a yard. Irvin's and hold in the backfield. And the big fullback hold gets it. And look at his leg drive. Didn't have a lot of area to operate, but he made some. Jay Cook over to make the stop. First down for eight, USC. <laughs> Leroy hold out of Banning High School. One of four players from Banning to be on this USC team. He is Aaron Emanuel's best friend and been a real confidant for him through some struggles. It was fun to talk to Holt. It is. He's got that sparkle in his eye, and you could see him being a great influence on young high school kids as a teacher and a coach. And this and is that's exactly what he wants to do. Yes. From the 23, first down. Minute left in the third quarter. Coming after him. Redovitz feels it, throws it. And it's Galbraith again, and Galbraith having a career day to the 19-yard line and out of bounds. Boy, is this a confidence builder right now for Marinovich? That is not an easy pass to throw. Throwing that ball that far across the field. Here's your tight end. He'll be breaking off to the left right now. Five-step drop, plants, turns, lets it go, throws it outside where he has to, but that is a tough throw. <laughs> and this guy right here, Galvin, is a character. He walked in the office Thursday when I was looking at films. He said to me, Coach, what are you doing, trying to get a job? <laughs> he says, maybe after the broadcast, I'll need it, but I think I'll be all right. <laughs> Boy, he's got a job, doesn't he? <laughs> he does. He's a physical guy, too. Gain of four, second and six to the 19. 52 seconds left in this third quarter. Marinovich. Oh. Straight ahead this time. That is Leroy Holt. No, check that. Irvins. And Irvins makes it to the 17-yard line. That was Pat Thomas, the nose guard over there, to make the stop. We mentioned the injury to Jeff Ellis earlier. Well, he was hurt early in this football game, and he is out for the year in the report we have. And we had a shot of him coming up here in just a moment. Ellis headed back out on some crutches. We saw him a little bit ago. There he is. Jeez, look at the size of that guy. That's too bad. Kind of uh, makes you sick, doesn't it? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And then they can't blame it on the astroturf. No, that's right. <laughs> 12 seconds left in the quarter. Third down and four. Marinovich got his man. Wellman, touchdown, USC.
does a real nice job out of the shotgun here. Throws the post pattern. Single coverage, no help inside. Little Wellman takes that in. And now Wellman's only five foot nine, 175 pounds, but he can literally fly 10, 400 meters, fifth in the state. That he has jets on his feet, and I believe it. He has now caught three passes, 74 yards, and two touchdowns. Point after by Rodriguez. And it's now 35 to three. Well, Dick, you said at the top of the show you thought this was one of the best three or four teams in the country. And the way USC is playing now, nothing to refute that. Well, I, I think it's taken the offense a little while to get going. Not only because it's the young quarterback, but John Masco and Ray Dorr have assumed the, the responsibility for coordinating the offense. And Chuck Hobart Stobert, who did it last year, left. You know, and it's taken them a little while to get their feel and their personality and their play calling into the SD offense. And it's obvious that Ray Dorr has it going today. Here comes that horse. Personal foul on the kicking team to be forced on the kickoff. The try was good. So the score stands at 35 to 3. And there is Traveler. Now that's not the original Traveler. We'll be back with a story on that. This is Traveler 5. The other one's on the IR. A party that were injured yesterday and it's kind of it's not really very funny but a lot of people know that traveler is a sacred tradition here at usc and traveler four went down because of the band he got a little excited ran off and caused some uh, kind of a hassle with everybody but the horse is fine rick owens who was the writer the other yesterday is fine and now he's using traveler five and everybody's happy to see the horse running around and i was about to ask rick if uh if the, if the horse gets tired with the smog here in the heat but he's not around you back to you gary you know it's funny you should say that i used to think when I coached against SC, that they got the horse in condition playing against my team. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice know that Cheryl said it's a sacred tradition? Well, she's an SC alum, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I couldn't help but pick up on sacred. It's sacred, but not to the other side of the line of scrimmage. And they hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, not to mention the horse. <laughs> So after the 15-yard penalty, USC will kick off from the 20. Lunderstrom is kicking off. Way short, picked up by the short man. And USC comes up to make the stop at the 35-yard line. That was Jay Cook who came up to field that one. We've come to the end of the third quarter of play. We'll return with more college football action between Ohio State and USC after this message and a word from our ABC stations. They've got some wild and fancy fashions here in South Carolina. That may, or I should say Southern California, that may be from Rodeo Drive. I saw some of those people walking around our hotel, I think. <laughs> they <laughs> do the, have some weird-looking guys around here. <laughs> from the 35-yard line now, Ohio State trailing 35-3. to Fry is still the quarterback. Our side, and... Might be a beginning point. Bobby Olive with the grab on the far side for the first down. Very what you got to do now, Dick, is just kind of put the pieces together, build, get ready for next week in Boston College. Oh, they have to, but it all goes back to the few three or four series of breakdowns in that second quarter that they, they, they wow. haven't been able to regain, and that gave momentum to USC, and then Marinovich has taken over. What, what did you say he was? Marinovich, after he was hurt, has completed 12 of 14 passes for 234 yards. That's yeah. remarkable. 47-yard line, first down for the Buckeyes. This is Bryant, James Bryant out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, to the 45-yard line. Bryant, the ball carrier. Let's look at the stats now and bring you up to date as to what's happened here. And USC is certainly having a big day. Look at that, 401 yards. <laughs> Man. And Marinovich is the guy who's engineered all but one of those touchdowns and I think it's a safe statement to say that he's arrived on the collegiate scene and people are going to take notice of him. First game against Illinois didn't go well. Got a little confidence last week and he's exploded here today. Second and eight. Fry on target to Graham and Graham inside the 30 to the 29. 
Marvin Pollard defending on the play. Another first down. So Fry and Graham now hooking up. They're starting to get a little better pass protection, a little better time to throw that drop back game right now. And stay out. It's still in there, the guy that was giving him the problem. See, it gets great drop back pass. Good pass protection. You'll see the tackles are using their hands, and they gave him time to throw that. Reached up, got the ball at the highest point, put it away. Graham out of Dayton, Ohio. Not great speed, but super hands. From the 29, there's a sprint draw handoff to Scotty Graham, and Graham doesn't get a lot. Graham has really been shut down today. Dan Owens is there first, and that's one of the reasons Dan Owens has been everywhere. You know, it's hard to make a living running, running inside on USC, and that's where you normally run your fullback is inside, and it's just tough. It's in the I formation, you know, really in the I formation, the fullback is more of a blocker. 13-20 left in the game. 35-3, to USC with the lead. Second down and eight. Fry in trouble. Down he goes. Pressure coming. Everybody was there, but in particular, Randy Horde, senior out of Riverside. Horde's dad, Roy, was quite a player at Duke and played with Mike McGee, the athletic director at USC. Randy Horde with a sack. Randy Horde will be coming in there now. He gets back. He has good initial protection. Now, as he starts to step up inside, here comes Horde. No place to move up inside. Horde was actually one of the most impressive pass rushers we, as a down lineman in the films that we evaluated, Gary. What they do is they move Owens to the nose, nose and bring right. him in. Bring him in. Third down, 20 yards to go. Fry, and he's on target. This time it's James Bryant. Bryant to the 32-yard line. If nothing, else, if nothing else out of this ball game, Ohio State's getting a, a lot of work on their pass protection, a lot of passing under pressure, which you can't assimilate in practice. You know? that's, the, that's the only positive. So the line of scrimmage now on a fourth down, the 32-yard line. It's fourth down, still 13 yards. So they're going to go for it with 11.42 left in the game. Long ways to go on a fourth down. Fry trying to get it, in trouble. Being chased around, gets away, throws up the field. That ball's going to be picked off, oh. Oh, incomplete. Underthrown intended for Jeff Graham. And Cleveland Colder had a real crack at an interception. And he, he's wondering how it got away from him. Tim he, Ryan came flying through to chase Fry out of the pocket. Well, they took two people to block Junior Seau that time. That gave him a chance to go ahead and spin out to his left and throw the football. And then Coulter has a chance to get his 11th interception and can't make the play. We're going to take a break. USC on a roll. So on a fourth down, a near interception, you look back at that, Coulter not picking it off may have been to USC's advantage because they get us the line of scrimmage to 32. But you know Coulter would like to have had that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't think he dropped it on purpose. From the 32 now, the Trojans still have Morenovich at quarterback. They still got their starting wide receivers, Wellman and Jackson in. Holt is the fullback. 11.28 left in the game. This is Aaron Emanuel, and Aaron Emanuel gets out to the 34, and he gives us an opportunity on this particular play. To remind you, Monday night, the Cleveland Browns and Cincinnati Bengals. Those two from the Buckeye State in the AFC Central Division. And I think one of the interesting stories, Dick, has been the start by Cleveland under new coach Bud Carson. He has him going. You know, Bud Carson has always been respected as a fine defensive coach. Now he's finally gotten his opportunity to be a head coach, and he has him buzzing. Boy, 51 to nothing the first game over Pittsburgh. Continued on to win. They're 2-0. Cincinnati 1-1, one one, losing their game to the Bears. Aaron Emanuel again, trying to get wide, and the 225-pounder does that, and he's just short of the first down. Aaron Emanuel was really impressive to visit with the other day, wasn't he? You know, Physically so impressive, but a pleasant guy. Yeah, and as he put together, you know, and he has a tendency maybe to run a little bit straight up and down, but he's as strong as a bull. You know, he's one of nine children 
You probably learn to run pretty good just to get to the dinner table when you're one and nine, don't you? Well, it's been tough for him to live up to all the billing he had. He came in here, he suspended one year for an altercation with a student. Tried to build, put the pieces back together, and they keep expecting him to explode. And the coaches are one. The coaches have really done a good job with this guy to rebuild him and really get him thinking positively. And he's a very religious young kid, and uh, probably going to make a pretty good living in the National Football League. On the third and one, Marinovich on the sneak straight ahead. You know, he ran for 4,807 yards, 54 touchdowns as a running back in high school. Coming out of Quartz High School, Quartz Hill High School, here in Southern Cal. You forget he was their leading rusher last year. Yep. He had some big games. 545 yards last year. First down now to the 43-yard line. 10, 26 left in the game. 35 to 3, USC. Marinovich looking over the secondary, dumps it off and incomplete. Holt tried to run with it before he had it. What you see in this game, Dick, is Marinovich showing real patience back there and really surveying, not just looking at his primary receiver. Well, what's obvious is what Larry Smith told us, that uh, Todd Marinovich came here, came here with what it takes to handle the, being a quarterback at USC. He, he has poise and he has confidence. But Marinovich will tell you, not having to play last year in redshirting took a lot of heat off him, too. He was not expected to be the starting quarterback. Pat O'Hara went down with a knee and chin fracture. And so he was pressed into the services very abruptly. Here's Aaron Emanuel. And Aaron Emanuel continues for a first down to the 41-yard line. Brent Johnson eventually caught up with it. I don't think you'd want to tackle this guy in the open field very often. Well, see, he's straight up and down, but at 225 pounds, all you have is knees and elbows, you know? 15-yard gain, and there's his numbers, 5 for 36. That's not a bad combination. Ricky Irvin's having a big day, over 100 yards, and then you can bring in Aaron Emanuel. You can wear some teams out. When you have a running back in your backfield that runs for 100 yards, you win 74% of the time. Remember that. You heard it here. <laughs> and that stat will certainly be accurate today. <laughs> Wellman and Jackson split out. Aaron Emanuel again. Oh, nice and tackle. Inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. Boy, that was a nice tackle that by Jay Ken Cook. Coleman also there, Jay Cook. He's a, Jay Cook's a tennis instructor in the summer, but he doesn't hit, he doesn't hit like a tennis player, does he? Wow, Ooh. did he let him have it. You look at Ohio State from their perspective. They started last year as an impressive win over Syracuse, then got beat soundly by Pittsburgh, having that happen again today. But I don't think they're nearly where they were a year ago in week number two. Well, maybe not. I still believe they're going to be a better team than they were. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah, I, I think so really, too. I really believe they're a better team. Second and seven. That game uh, was that? a disaster for them at the time. Here is Emmanuel running again and not any place to go. Picked up maybe a yard. On a third down now coming up. That big, was Rich Fremel on the tackle. Big Alonzo Selman, number 99, is in the ball game. Talking with him yesterday, I looked down at his feet, Gary. He has size 18 shoes. <laughs> he can't get too close to you because if he does, he steps on your toes, you know? <laughs> Pleasant guy. Yeah, he's going to be, a, he'll be an All-American, I think, somewhere yeah. down the road. Yep. Came out of Mount Holly High School in New Jersey. Maybe we get a shot of him here in a minute and show you what, what big feet are really like. Third down six, and they are big, believe me. From the spread is Marinovich. He's going to Wellman, and Wellman's got him beat. Underthrown and broken up. Wellman went right by Brian Cook, number 29, but the ball was underthrown. He got knocked down, too, right at the end of the throw there. Might have taken a little bit off to get it away as, what, as he would have liked to. Wellman makes everybody look like they're running in a molasses out there. He just goes by people. <laughs> Wellman has great speed, as we've said earlier. I asked him the other day, I said, but where'd you get all that speed? It was your dad real fast? He said, no, yeah, he's just, he just gifted. He had a brother, Glenn, who played for Larry Smith at Arizona. The punt now underway. Trying to pooch kick this one, and the ball is rolling oh. into the end zone. Nice play by Carrier. That was Mark Preston who was trying to pooch kick it. 38-yarder at the 20. Ohio State will have it. 8.05 left. 
Pasadena, New Year's Day, and you just saw one of those flashbacks, and you're now looking at a new quarterback for Ohio State. Kirk Herbstreet, out of Centerville, Ohio, a red-shirt freshman who played a little bit last week. He was the first recruit for John Cooper when he went to Arizona State. He was the Ohio Player of the Year, but ran a wishbone in high school. From the 20-yard line, the Buckeyes have it there. This is Bryant, a lot of running room, and Bryant out to the 34, and that'll be a first down. There's a flag down there. There's a flag. I think they get the offensive holding. You got it. Cooper's got to be very disappointed. Uh, that time, Bryant with a big burst for the first down, but it's going to come back. Well, John Cooper never lost to USC prior to today. Holding on the offense, the course to the previous spot, the key first down. But he also had never beaten Larry Smith. In fact, Larry Smith knocked him out of the Rose Bowl one year when he beat Arizona State. So these two hooking up again, and they'll play in Columbus next year. This is a home series for both teams starting this uh, year. They had one in 63-64, so maybe they get even with them in Ohio Stadium. First and 20. Try it again to the 13-yard line, and let's take this opportunity to go to New York. Here's Roger Twyman. Thank you very much, Gary. And just a few moments ago, a lot closer to you than to me in Pasadena, the Michigan Wolverines uh, arriving at the Rose Bowl. Of course, Michigan 0 one ranks fifth in the nation. And UCLA, the short bus trip from Westwood over to Pasadena. UCLA 1-1, one one, but UCLA has won the last two meetings between these two teams in the regular season in 82 and 83. That game coming up at 8 Eastern time tonight here on ABC. Let's go back to Gary Bender. Just get a little higher in the Coliseum here. Maybe we can see the Rose Bowl from here. Second down now, 18 to go. And good hit. This is Bryant again, good second effort. Is Ohio State now playing with almost an entire new offensive unit in there in that offensive line. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game for each team. And for the 19th year through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. Okay, for USC, you might have to think a while who would be their MVP. There's been a lot of them. Uh, I'd say I'd go Todd Marinovich. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Jackson's had a great game. Irvin's has had a great game. Herb Street back to throw. Look at it. Hey. out there. Junior Seau and Herb Street had no chance to get rid of the football. And here so the punt the football will be the Buckeye. Here's a young man that came out of high school came out of high school here he is number 55 tell us they're not working again excuse me but here he is the right hand side of your screen rush hard rush up the outside on an offensive tackle that's roy nichols number 63 he didn't even attempt to block him that was a, a mental not a physical mistake bowman back to punt it's a low kick not a good one at all cleveland colder watches it bounce and it's going to go dead at the 47 yard line so bowman did not hit that one well 39 yarder for jeff bowman who's still not on scholarship he's a walk-on transfer from kent state university so the trojans will have it 535 left in the game 35 to 3 the men of troy night football continues as it's going to be a battle between the AFC top offense and its best defense Bernie Kozar and the Browns Boomer Esiason of the Bengals 9 o'clock Eastern who do you like in that game you have to always have to stay with the Bengals I think right now until they prove they are the AFC championship caliber Shane Foley who came in when Marinovich was hurt in the first half comes back in a quarterback comes out throwing and he's on target to Marlon Washington Marlon Washington had a catch last week, comes back to catch that football, very close to the first down. Shane Foley, you remember now, came in when Marinovich went out, engineered the drive, and eventually threw the touchdown pass to Galbraith to give USC their first lead in the game. Shane Foley played his high school football in Newport Beach. He played for a former USC coach here, Mike Giddings, who runs NFL scouting service. In his spare time, he coached the football team down there and did a good job. 
Second down, a yard to go. They picked up nine. Get this time to Chavez. It's Chavez running the far side from uh, Bakersfield, California. He was a junior college All-American. And Derek Foster knocked him out of bounds, but it's enough for the first down. Line of scrimmage to 34. So USC now starting to put some of their second line people in. Mark Tucker now runs off the field, the All-American candidate. He is a good football player. He's actually a, a, a looks very much like Foster. The All-American guard was the number one pick of Miami Dolphins a few years ago. Roy Foster. Roy right. Foster. Looks just like him. Maybe a little bit taller. Michael Moody is in there right now. He's their biggest lineman. 6'7", 290. Started the first game of the year. Here's Emmanuel. Emmanuel, nice stutter step. Inside the 30 to the 27. Two yards short of the first down. Steve Tovar made the stop. Clarence Tillman, the running back coach for... USC has really worked on this guy, trying to get him lower and, and use more than just brute strength to run over people, and it shows. I think he's improved. Well, at the start of the day, the Pac-10 had four unbeaten clubs, and one of those is Washington State. They've already won today. Arizona State, Oregon. Boy, that Oregon team. What a surprise they were last week Hello. against Iowa. Rich Fremel. No place to go. The guy they call the Tasmanian Devil, Rich Kremel, out of <laughs> New Olmsted, Ohio, was there and uh, dropped him there. He they, lettered as a true freshman last year. He did. He's a state heavyweight wrestling champion senior year in State, Ohio. Pretty good football player, pretty good athlete, and a, certainly a good future. Line of scrimmage now, the 26-yard line. Third down still, two yards to go. Washington in the game, and Joel Scott, a freshman out of Houston, has come in at a wide receiver position. Aaron Emanuel running with the gun. Look at this outside move. He looks good right now. He looks yes, like he's he running with a lot more authority and reckless abandon. And Ryan Cook is over there to stop him. Another first down. It's a game where you can build some confidence. Morinovich has done that. Wellman has come back. Well, last week they had a bit. They ran for over 400 yards last week. <laughs> but this is uh, a Big Ten team. Yeah, I know it. So they're building confidence two weeks yeah. in a row. I still don't think this is indicative of uh, actually a true evaluation of Ohio State. I think they're better than this. They really do. Though I believe USC is as good. USC at Washington State next week. Chavez and uh, Emmanuel, the running back. be close to a first down to the 11-yard line. That was Mario Roystar. Mario Roystar, who wasn't even on their three deep, who is now in at the tailback spot for USC. About uh, three yards short of the first down, brings up second down. 3.09 left. Well, let me ask you about the next one, Michigan, UCLA, and the Rose Bowl. It'll be tough on Terry because Terry's offensive line isn't playing real well right now and maybe playing as well as they did last year but they didn't have to beat somebody running when they had the great quarterback fake by Shane Foley keeps it inside the 10 look at this run you can see why they think he's their most mobile best option quarterback Ken Coleman caught up with him first and goal inside the five getting back to that UCLA game uh, Coach Johnny has made some changes in that defense and added some speed this week to it, tried to pick up that tempo a little bit for pursuit purposes. And uh, I'll be surprised if it isn't really a tight, intense, tough football game. Elvis Gerback will be starting a quarterback in place of Michael Taylor for Bo Schembechler. You know, when you lose a Troy Aikman, sometimes uh, you don't realize that you lose more than just a passer. You, you lose a guy that controls how the, another team plays defense, too. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. First and goal inside the five. Roy Starr carrying the ball, fighting for the goal line. Just short of it. That was Spellman, the man you were talking about, with a size 18 shoe that stopped him from getting to the end zone. I, I've never seen a, an athlete with a foot that big. I never have. They say a basketball player. Bob got, Lanier had a Bob, 22. 22? Yep. What they do, hook shoes together, make one? There's a... I don't know what size shoe he has, but he certainly... It's gone up in stature. The whole Marinovich, he's talking about his sore wrist. It'll probably be a lot more sore tomorrow, but it won't hurt as much because he did such a good job today. Second and goal. Get the Roystar diving, and he is in for the touchdown. And so USC adds to their advantage. Now 41-3. to 
The most points scored in a game between these two was in the Rose Bowl in 73. And that year it was 42 to 17. So they're a point shy of that and can tie it now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you be the linebacker. You go make the tackle. Get up off the couch and make the hit. <laughs> it's not easy to do, is it? Getting that eye formation, they hand the ball real deep so the running back has a good running start and he can just leap in the air and get over the block. Normally, your offensive line will come off just a little bit lower in that situation. Point after attempt coming up now. Rodriguez to kick it. Don Jackson to hold it. Rodriguez puts it through, and that ties the most points scored against Ohio State in this long, illustrious series. 42 to 3. A minute 38 left to go in the first of this twin bill from the Los Angeles area, and thus far, it's been all Pac-10 in the doubleheader. any dandruff do you i used to have it boy did i ever so i tried head and shoulders then i tried my wife selson blue she was right blue is better blue is better selson blue test shows selson blue relieves dandruff flaking better than head and shoulders and doctors recommend it number one more than head and shoulders denorex and tegrin combined for me there's no doubt about it blue is better selson blue normal extra medicated and extra conditioning formulas Shane Foley just got off the phone. His girlfriend called him, told him what a great job he did. He, told, he said he might be a little late. I'm playing here in the fourth quarter. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a good-looking really, young man. Yes, sir. He's done well, and the guy who started the game, Marinovich, has done well. They have a freshman, by the way, by the name of Reggie Perry. We watched work out. And he looks like a clone of Rodney Peake. But he has a better arm. I'm telling you. A year from now, I promise you there's going to be a quarterback controversy at USC. Between Marinovich and Perry? Yeah. Perry's out of Texas. And is he something? Oh, I man, thought he was and I thought it was Rodney P. Runnerstrom, who's been busy today, will kick off again. 42-3 to the score. 138 left in the game. This is Dante Lee, a true freshman, bringing the ball oh. and hit hard as he comes across the 20 to the 23-yard line. They really like Dante Lee. Carried the ball twice so far in his career, but they think this guy's going to be a good football player. 18 years old out of Dayton, Ohio. Ran for 1,200 yards his senior year, 7.8 average, 23 touchdowns. They recruited him. They thought he might be a DB or a wide receiver, but he's looked so good at running back, they've left him there. So now with 131 left, Ohio State with Herb Street, the quarterback, will start this series from the 23-yard line. On the roll, tough throw, coming back to the ball is Edwards, can't come up with it. Again, this reminder, We'll be bringing you from the Rose Bowl about, let me say, 14 miles from here to the Rose Bowl for this game team. between Michigan and UCLA. Begins at 8 o'clock Eastern live. You know, Gary, I can remember in 1974 talking to J.D. Morgan, the deceased linebacker, uh, linebacker, athletic director, uh, UCLA about playing in the Rose Bowl rather than the Coliseum and, and establishing our own home. And he said if we did that, you know, we'll never get our on-campus stadium. What happened? Yeah, they did that. They never did get their own campus <laughs> stadium. That's the reason I'm asking. Herbstreit throwing and over through throws his receiver to 40. Would have been interesting, though, if UCLA still used this their home field. We could have the doubleheader right here. Yeah. Could have had, had one it? game, have an hour break, and just kick it off again. Yeah, never did that when I was here. I know that. I don't know if they, I don't know if they ever had done that. Yeah, no, I remember playing a night game here, and SC had played an afternoon game here. Yes, I do. I think we played Iowa State here one night after an SC home game. Maybe I'm wrong, but J.D. Morgan was a great fellow. He was a great fellow. He was in charge, wasn't he? You told me a couple of times. He got, his, he got the word across. Third down now, 10 yards to go for Ohio State. 119 left in the game. 
Look out. Three, the good fake that time. Ryan runs into everybody. The entire USC defense was there on that one. David Webb, the first to get there from Irvine. You know, you, you, I keep hearing you say USC, and we're doing it. I can't help but flashes of John McKay go across my mind. You see him on that sideline. What a great job he did here over those years. And 127 wins. Yeah. Craig Furtig walked by at halftime to say hello, and Craig Furtig was with him all those years. He's also Marinovich's uncle. That's right. Boy, you're prepared. Well, I try to keep up with you. <laughs> Next week, Notre Dame and Purdue. The Irish struggled a little bit against uh, George Purvis' Spartans, but they pulled it out. Red Acres Purdue team will have a handful. On a fourth down, Bowman punched this one, bouncing around. And the ball is going to roll to about the 36-yard line. We have 27 seconds left of the game. Thanks to our statistician, George Hill, spotter Bill Friel. Bill Friel. He sneaks in here every week, doesn't he? He's a silly guy. I like him. He's a silly guy. But John Cooper will have to retool, get ready to go for BC, the first time they've ever played Boston College. Then they have to go to Illinois. Yeah. So the Buckeyes really have their work cut out for them. And the thing that's probably is as discouraging as anything, they lost Jeff Ellis. And boy, what a blow that is to this team. Tight end going down early with a knee injury. Larry Smith still coaching over there. Well, when he's not, uh, he's talking he's to coach a little bit. He's co talking to Coach Masco. John Masco coaches the offensive line. So Larry Smith will keep his uh, string alive against John Cooper. It'll go 3-0. We've got a timeout. 27 seconds left. Back in a moment. You know what Magnavox has done to CD technology? They invented it. Sure, but you know what they did now? Uh, they made it sound great. Tom's right. Magnavox compact displays have been top rated for flawless sound. I know that. But now, they have a six disc changer that lets you play up to seven hours of uninterrupted music. I know that too. And you could program it to play the songs you want in the order you want. I already knew that. So why don't you tell me? Because it's fun being smarter than you. Magnavox. Smart choice. Very smart. I'm a Prudential representative, and I help people review their life insurance needs because I know how much the right life insurance means to me and my family. You take pride in your life, so do we. Going above and beyond is the policy of a rock. The Prudential above. Gary Bender, Dick Vermeil, Cheryl Miller. Only 27 seconds left in this game. Ohio State making their first trip to meet USC in the Coliseum since 1963. They might not want to come back again. This has been a long afternoon. Shane Foley is the quarterback. He and Todd Marinovich have done an outstanding job. Ed Chavez, the fullback, out to the 45-46 yard line. Ed Chavez is a non-scholarship fullback from Bakersfield Junior College. They really like this young man. 6'1", 220 pound, redshirted last year. He walked on. So Larry Smith will win, and USC now has won the last four games. Their 21st meeting, the final is going to be 42-3. The Chevrolet, most valuable players of the game, Carlos Snow, 11 carries, 83 yards from Ohio State. Todd Marinovich, who threw so brilliantly, coming out in this football game, 14 of 22 for 246 yards, four touchdowns. And Chevrolet will donate a thousand dollars to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. 42 to three, it was all USC. Listen to my nephew. He's going to be a lawyer like me. He's even going to look like me. Oh, really? Does that mean on his first big trial day, the jury's going to notice his winning smile? Yeah. Great suit. Yeah. Oh, his little slate. Oh, Dandy, me? Oh, it's going to happen to perfect people. Here, just use my shampoo. Head and shoulders? Mm -hmm. But you don't have Dandy. <laughs> I rest my face. Head and shoulders, because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. 
Just off Route 19 in St. Petersburg is a place where you can learn to ski the Alps and shoot the rapids all in the same building. At Bill Jackson Sporting Goods, you can practice everything from a stem crispy to an Eskimo roll. But if you go there, remember, bring your imagination and your Visa card. Because Bill Jackson doesn't promise you Sun Moritz, and he doesn't take American Express. Visa is everywhere you want to be. 42 to 3, USC with a victory. And Dick Vermeil, you look back, way back in this football game, and you forget how this kind of game unfolded and how kind of this game unraveled for Ohio State. Those penalties early, and all of a sudden, USC gained confidence, and they put them away. And the fumble by Snow coming out of their own end zone area there, and that was a short drive for an SC touchdown. But SC is the better football team, and that, I know that's a play on words, but they're you know, definitely a better team. But Ohio State is not that bad. Ohio State will have to regroup. USC, on the other hand, heads to Pullman to meet Washington State and the Cougars. That won't be a gimme. No, it won't. Washington State still unbeaten after winning today. You see how it started. Omaro gave him the lead, three to nothing. And then, all of a sudden, after Marinovich was hurt, Foley comes in, throws for a touchdown pass. And after that, Marinovich, three more. And before the day was over, Marinovich had the best day of his young career and made a statement. Made a statement that he is absolutely an outstanding quarterback and will be something special in the games ahead and usc i think that uh, is probably said very well by larry smith we'll find out what kind of football team we are today well he's got to be happy he's got to be excited about it and i don't think he'll uh, i think he'll evaluate it in the proper perspective and he'll be right away in about an hour talking about playing washington state next week so larry smith makes his team two and one he's three and oh against john cooper and he's finally been able to break that drive.